with my own thought. Got treasures in my mind, but couldn't open up my own vault. My town like creativity, purity, and honesty is honestly being crowded by these grown thoughts. Reality is catching up with me, taking my inner child, I'm fighting for custody. But these responsibilities, if they entrusted me, as I look down at my diamond and crush the peace, thinking no one. Translation with a whole fucking nation. They say I was the abomination of Obama's nation. Well, that's a pretty bad way to start the conversation. At the end of the day, God, I'm killing this. I know damn well y'all feeling this. I don't need your fuck. I'm on my own. I ain't got a power chip. Who you going home with? How you doing? I'm surviving. I was drinking earlier. Now I'm driving. What a bad and crips all got along they probably got me down by the end of the song seem like the whole city go against me every time i'm in the street i hear yuck, 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 yuck. Man down. where you from who you know where you from where your grandma stay on my this mad city i run brace yourself i take you on a trip down memory lane this is not a rap on how I'm slinking. Go move. This is cold as second. Plenty cognac and major pain. Not the drill sergeant, but the stress that weighing on your brain. It was me, El Boogie, Yang Yang, YG, Lucky. Ride down Rosecrans, it got ugly. Waving your hand out the window. Check yourself. Uh, warriors and Conan's hope euphoria can slow dance with society. The driver seat, the first one to get killed. Seen a light skin with his brains blown out. At the same break, a stand with tank out. Now, this is not a tape recorder saying that he did it. But ever since that day, I was looking at him different. That was back when I was nine. Joey packed a nine. Pack a stand on every porch is fine. We adapt to crime. Pack a van with four guns at a time. With the sliding door, fuck it's up. You shooting for if you ain't walking up, fucking punk. Picking up the fucking pump. Picking up you sucker, 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 die a sucker punch. A wall of bullets coming from AKs, ARs, AR, duck. That's what mama said when we was eating that free lunch. Oh man, damn, all hell broke loose. You killed my cousin back in 94. Fuck your truce. Now crawl your head in that news. You wind up dead on the news. Ain't no peace treaty, just peace and BGs up to pre approve Bodies on top of bodies, ivies on top of ivies. Obviously, the coroner between the sheets like the Aussies. When you hop on that trolley, make sure your color's correct. Make sure your corporate or they be calling your mother collect. They say the governor collect all of our taxes, except when we in traffic and tragic happens. That's 
they no threats. You moving backwards if you suggest that you sleep with a tech. Go buy your chop and have a doctor on speed dial, I guess. Mass City. Man down. Where you from? Who you know? Where you from? Where your grandma stay? Huh, man? This Mad City I run. If I rules and crips, all I got alone. They probably got me down by the end of the song. Seem like the whole city go against me. Every time I'm in the street, I hear yak, yak, yak. Wake your pump, suck. It ain't nothing but a cop and bang. Chill. Real simple and plain. They teach you some lessons about the street. Good. Suck, up, suck, up, suck, up, suck up. We do. Fresh out of school, cause I was a high school grad. Sleeping in the living room of my mama's bed. Reality struck, I seen a white car crash. The light pole too, just hopped out on foot and dashed. My pop said I needed a job, I thought I believed him. Security gone for a month and ended up leaving. In fact, I got fired, cause I was inspired by all of my friends. To stage a robbery the third Saturday, I clocked in. Projects tow up, gang signs get thrown up. Laced in marijuana. And they wonder why I really smoke now. Imagine if your first blood had you foaming in the mouth. How straight tweak it the next week and we broke even. I made allegiance and made a promise to see you bleeding. You know the reasons, but still I never know my life. King Trick, aka Comp, this human sacrifice. Yeah. We mix this since the 80s, low. Stay spot, it's there, making up the flesh. Cluck heads all up and down the block. One time's crooked as block of the end. Alondra, Rose Clans, Bullets. What's up? It's I'm still in the hood. No, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, the hood took me under, so I follow the rules. But yeah, that's like me. I grew up in the hood where they banging. Cause the rep colors is doing the same thing. Pass it to the left so I can smoke on me. A couple drive-bys in the hood lately. Yeah. A couple of IPs with the f***ing spray can. Shots in the crowd, then everybody ran. Yeah. Slave, street life, I crave. Shots at the enemy, horse turn brave. Mount up, regulators in the whip. Down the boulevard with the grip. Yeah, trip. We in the hood still. So low grab strap, cause gear is so real. Yeah, deal with the outcome of strap in the hand and the burn 10 grams where motherfuckers stand. If I told you I killed that nigga at 16, would you believe? Innocent Kendrick, you seen in the street with a basketball and some now ladies to eat. If I'm mashing all of my skeletons, what you drop in the sea? Would you say my intelligence now is great relief? And it's safe to say that our next generation maybe can sleep with dreams of being a lawyer, doctor. Instead of boy with a chopper, they hold the court as a hostage. Kill them all if they got so the children of the corn. Save and lies and the option of living a lie. Drive their body with toxins. Drinking and drive. Hit the f***er, then watch this flame that arrive in his eye. Listen, count with the cops if it's aim and they bang in the slide. Out that bitch with the pies and the price in the head. The probably go to the projects. Ah, live inside the belly, hunt the rough. Cop the USA, made me an angel. Yeah. 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 Pass Dr. Bottle, damn. You ain't the one that got f***ed up. What you holding it for? It's always acting like insensitive. That ain't no word. Shut up. The doc, you good, my n Don't even trip. Just lay back and drink that. Go, 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 shorty. It's your birthday. We gon' party like it's your birthday. We gon' sip a party like it's your birthday. And you know we don't give a fuck. It's like your birthday. You can find me in the club. Bottle full of bub. Mama, I got what you need. If you need to fill the bars. I'm in the having sex. I ain't in the making love. So come give me a hug. If you're in the getting rough. You can find me in the club. Bottle full of bub. Mama, I got what you need. If you need to fill the bars. I'm in the having sex. I ain't in the making love. So come give me a hug. If you're in the getting rough. When I pull up out front, you see the Benz on do. Uh -huh. When I roll 20 deep, it's always drama in the club. Yeah. Now that I roll with Dre, everybody show me love. When you sell like them and them, you be plenty of groupie love. But homie, ain't nothing to change. Roll down, G's up. I see exhibit in the cutting, man. Roll them up. Roll you that. watch how I move. You mistake before I play up here. Been hit with a few, but now I don't walk with a limp. I'm right. In the hood, in the lay, they say 50, you hot. Uh -huh. They like me, I want them to love me like they love pop. But I live in New York, Michelle, tell you I'm low. Go. Yeah. The plan is to put the rap game in the choke. Uh -huh. I'm full of 
focus, man. My money on my mind. Got a meal out the deal, and I'm still in the grind. Now, shorty says she's feeling my style, she's feeling my flow. A girl from what did they buy, and they ready to go. I'm getting yeah. up, bottle full of bug. Mama, I got what you need. You need to feel the buzz. I'm in the habit sex, I ain't in the making love. So come give me a hug. If you're in the getting drunk, you can find me in the club. Bottle full of bug. Mama, I got what you need. You need to feel the buzz. I'm in the habit sex, I ain't in the making love. So come give me a hug. If you're in the getting drunk. My flow, my show brought me the dope that bought me all my fancy things. My crib, my cars, my clothes, my shoes. Look for me, I done came on and I ain't changing. You should love it way more than you hate it. Oh, you mad? I trust that you be happy I made it. I'm the cat by the bar, toasting to the good life. Moved out the hood, now you trying to pull me back, guys. Too much on, get the bumping in the club, it's on. I'm with my eyes, your chicks, if she smiles, she gone. If the roof on fire, man, just let it burn. If it's talking about money, homie, I ain't concerned. I'ma tell you what banks for me, cause go ahead, switch the style up. And if they hate, then let them hate, them. watch the money pile up. And we can go upside the head with a bottle of blood. Come on, they know where we be. You can find me in the club. Bottle full of bug. Mama, I got what you need. You need to feel the buzz. I'm in the habit sex. I ain't in the making love. So come give me a hug. If you're in the getting drunk, you can find me in the club. Bottle full of bug. Mama, I got what you need. You need to feel the buzz. I'm in the habit sex. I ain't in the making love. So come give me a hug. If you're in the getting drunk. <laughs> don't try to act like you don't know who we be, Diva. We the club on time. So pop, pop on.
Good afternoon, football fans. Welcome to McLeod Athletic Stadium, where this afternoon's BCFC contest has the visiting Valley Huskers here to face your Langley Rams. Who's ready for some football? Please welcome to the field now the visiting team, the Valley Huskers. Cowards, then it's gonna be quick. All right, oh, you made up in the jail before? Suck my dick. You know, let my catch you run with. Get done with. Jump quick. Uh, you gonna poke the dog with some bum. All right, they go to click, click. Now I'm one, one. What? All over some dumb. Ooh. Ain't that some? Uh. You remind me of a strip club. Every time you come around, it's like, what? I just gotta get my dick up. And I don't know who the fuck you think you talk the truth. But I'm not him. I explain to watch what you do. Or you gonna find yourself very next to someone else. And we all thought you loved yourself. But that couldn't have been the issue. Or maybe they just saying that now because they miss you. Maybe they tried to diss you. That's why you laying on your back looking at the roof of the church. Preacher telling the truth and it hurts. Y'all go make me lose my mind. Up in here, up in here. Heavy and 
no more talks. Put him in the dirt stick. You keep up. That you're trying to end up. Ready. Hey, football fans, we apologize for the technical difficulties. Please join me in welcoming to the field, led by head coach Jordan McCarty, your Langley Rams. Rams fans, as this is our last regular season home uh, game at home, please join us in welcoming our seniors. Isaiah Anderson. Cairo Hassan. Evan Nolly. Chase Malenstein. Brox Kamya, Trey Jones, Kenneth Barucas, Gideon Kremler, Brody Clark, Tyson Graham. Bucci Michael. Sorry? No, no, no. Joe Rocco. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are now joined by Rams alumni, Cade Manuel South, to speak a few words about truth and reconciliation. Thank you. Thank you to the Rams organization for having me out here today. Hello, everybody. I'm Cade Manuel South, an interior Salish from the uh, Sequetmic Nation of Tekeplums. I'm here to inform you that Orange Shirt Day is not a holiday. It is about reconciliation for colonization. It is about the traditional territories, lands, and resources of the indigenous people that have been taken and stolen. Our culture and language. So today is to create awareness. Sorry. <laughs> today is to create awareness about indigenous issues, the history, The history of Orange Shirt Day comes from Phyllis Wysteb, a fellow Shaquetmic, who, on the day she was taken to residential school, was given an orange shirt for her family to wear. And once she got to the school, it was stripped from her and taken. The orange shirt is to honor all of the children that were taken and those who didn't make it home. And today, I stand here with the ability to have long hair for those who weren't able. And I stay stand here to pay homage to my family and my grandfather who went to residential school and assisted in closing down the Kamloops Residential School. I stand here on behalf of all of the survivors, those who made it home and those who didn't make it home. And so on this day, 
Langley fans, please get ready to cheer on your Langley Rams against the Chilliwack Huskers on these sacred, traditional, and unceded lands of, of the Quantlam, Catsy, Musqueam. Oh God. And the see my see my woo home. and the CI Moo <laughs> Nations. Let's go Rams! The Langley Rams organization was devastated with the sudden passing of Constable Rick O'Brien last Friday. Rick was a dedicated, a decorated police officer who prior to joining the RCMP seven years ago, worked as an educa education assistant, a mental health worker, and youth worker. He was a very giving and loving husband, father, brother, and son. Family was incredibly important to Constable O'Brien, who was survived by his wife, Nicole, and their children. He will be deeply missed by all those who knew him, and mourned by Canadians across the country. Rick was a Langley Rams supporter in many ways, and presented the 2019 Canadian Bowl Trophy to the, my apologies to the Saskatoon Hilltops on behalf of the CJFL. We send our deepest condolences to Constable Brian's family, Nicole and the kids, to the Maple Ridge and Coquitlam RCMP, and to all RCMP members for their loss. We also wish a full and speedy recovery to our two injured members. You are a true hero, Rick, and the Rams family will never forget you. Would you please join me in a moment of silence? Fans, if I could ask if you could please rise, if you are able, remove your caps, and join Kylie Manti for the singing of our national anthem. Oh, Canada, our home on native land, true patriot love, in all of us come in. with glowing hearts we see thee rise the true north strong and free from far and wide oh canada we stand on guard for thee God keep our land glorious and free. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. There it is, Smile Time, favorite song, O Canada, on our home and native land indeed. And Jake Elliott, Justin Morris, set with you as we get set for Langley Rams football here on BCFC TV. And we got a good one on deck here for you, Justin, as two 
Five and two teams will meet up here for the second time this season. They met way back in the very opening game of the year in a game that went the way of the Valley Huskers 26 to 18 and a lot riding on this game not only the season series and the head to head the point differential can get into it a little bit further but oh, uh, yeah, with that, that cancelled game with the Okanagan Sun will play a factor here as well but I think when you boil it all down we're going to get a really good matchup here between two very good football teams that I think are very evenly matched up and uh, I think we're in here for a good Saturday afternoon from McLeod Athletic Park. Well, they had an even record at 0-0 zero and zero coming into the last time they met, Jake, of course. As you mentioned, the season opener out in Chilliwack, kicking things off between these two regional rivals. And they have an even record coming into this one today as well at 5-2 and two through seven games. And I was thinking ahead of this one as well, I don't know when the last time this late in the season you could say that the Huskers were neck and neck with the Rams in the standings. Team that Langley has handled, but it's a new looking Huskers team that has really kind of turned the corner after the last three or four years here and have seemingly hit their stride here in 2023 as it looks like the playoff teams are set. We know the West Shore Rebels are a really good football team. 8-0, undefeated, Okanagan Sense in at 5-1, and one. and then you have these two teams at 5-2. and two. As Langley still with West Shore remaining on their schedule, the Valley Huskers still have the Okanagan Sun and Kamloops to play. So lots to be decided here as we work our way to playoff time in the BCFC. Of course, today, Justin, Truth and Reconciliation Day, Orange Shirt Day, a lot of orange around the stadium here. I'm wearing mine as well. And a, a pretty heavy opening ceremony here from a descendant a, and an ancestor from a residential school survivor. And it got pretty emotional, and, and you can understand why. But I think, you know, that, that message really hit home how important this day is to the Indigenous people. And you can see as well the support that he received uh, during the moments when it got a little bit too much for him, perhaps. Uh, plenty of Rams on hand to, to lend a helping hand and throw an arm over his shoulder and let him know that he has the support of this team. So you hope that the team can now turn those emotions around and perhaps funnel them into this game and, and try and put on a show for the fans that have assembled uh, here today. But obviously, as you allude to, Jake, this day uh, about a lot more than just a football game. As we play on the unseated territories of the KC and Semiamu. And, you know, uh, for the people out there that may not know a whole lot about Orange Shirt Day and Truth and Reconciliation, I encourage you, don't look at this this weekend here as just another long weekend in the calendar. Go out. Do something, learn something about the Indigenous culture and the First Nations people, and just kind of better yourself a little bit this weekend while you enjoy an extra day off of work. Absolutely. If you're, if you're looking for a long weekend holiday, you got another one of those coming up next weekend. Yeah. This is a, a time for self-reflection and uh, uh, self-education. Education, absolutely. Kick it off. Let's play some football. A high skying kick will bounce out of bounds, and that'll be a penalty on the opening kickoff here on Valley, who are in their white jerseys today with the green helmets, screen numbers, a little yellow trim in there as well as the Rams in their beautiful blues, white pants, white helmets for Langley, who will get the football to start this game, and it looks like they'll take it on the 40-yard line from the right hash mark here is out into the sun comes Jones, who has really led the way here for Langley at quarterback. 107 completions on 176 attempts, good enough for 62%. Goes along with 18 touchdowns and just four interceptions for Jones so far this year. He's been real good for Langley. It's been a little while since the two of us have been together in it the has. booth, Jake, but... Busy the Rams summer. have been rolling since we last saw them. Some big wins over Prince George, certainly, and we'll see if they can do it again here today. It's Cairo Hassan on the opening carry as he'll run it right for a couple. As it's been he and Bruce Jones that have handled the rock the most here for Langley, and I expect another heavy dose of those two coming out of the Langley backfield here once again. As just a picture-perfect day here on a Saturday afternoon. The Rams have been rolling since we weather. last saw them. Some big some wins. Big out of the shotgun comes Jones here staring at a second and eight. And he'll take that snap as he looks soft and now looks deep. He's got a man up the sideline and flag will come in late. Did I see one fly? And maybe not, Justin, as it yeah, I, been a pylon over there or a cone over on the Husker sideline that I saw that was yellow, but... 
man, I thought potentially a little face guarding here. Never turned his head back to the football, but it'll be a quick two and out here on the ramps. Yeah, quick uh, second look at the replay that we just got there. And, and questionable, let's say, but no flag on that play. And the Rams will have to kick this one away after a two and out. And if they don't want to call that, that's fine. Let's just keep that consistent exactly. for the rest of the afternoon. Exactly. That's what we can hope for here. Cameron, short kick, a spiraling one, heading for the Husker sideline, played up the 50. And it should be a no yards call there on Langley as well. But again, I don't think a flag came out. Which, hey, if they want to let him play, Jake, yeah. I, I'm totally okay with that today. We have seen probably too many games this season where it feels like the pace has been completely halted by the officials. I know they got a difficult job to do as well. I mean, no shade in their general direction, but... If this is what they're going to do, personally, let's play some football. Absolutely. Ball is on the 54-yard line on the left hash mark as the Huskers get their first offensive possession here. And good field position to start it. As they'll wave the receivers in motion. It's a jet sweep here to the wide receiver, Kelly. As he tried to turn it upfield and gets a couple, but a flag is down on the far side of the field here. And a little interesting note you and I were talking about before this game got started. Uh, the the guy who's taking the predominant, uh, the predominantly taking the snaps for this Huskers team over the course not of the season. Not listed on the roster. Yeah, not on the roster today. Lucas Fever, the only quarterback listed for Valley in this one. He's got... Just a marvelous completion rate on oh the season. Goodness. It's staggering, but we'll see if he can carry that success over into this one. And he's got some rush yards to go along with it for the former GW Graham Grizzly, who is joined on this Huskers team by his counterpart, Jaden Klassen. As Fever goes out of the shotgun, empty backfield, set up a little screen to the big fella, and he's got first down yardage and more as he's taken down. After a good gallop for Isaiah Latender out of the backfield wearing number 99, the offensive lineman goes for 12. How about that play call? Not often you see a lineman get tabbed with a situation like that. I know I never got to carry the ball in my yeah, days as a lineman. But. Well, and you probably had to declare him being an eligible receiver for him to catch that ball as well and maybe Langley just thought it was a bit of a decoy it's fever on the pitch this time and hurtling over a would-be tackler and picking up a couple along the ground I believe that was Reese Wyke correct yes number 20 Reese Wyke showing some good speed and the Langley Rams doing a good job to limit his ability to move that ball as well just a short pickup of about two and a half yards yeah, or so. averaging over seven and a half per carry for wake to go along with seven touchdowns on the season close to 800 yards so far here for valley fever sends him in motion and takes the shotgun snap quick pass over the middle and through the hands of the intended recipient and almost picked off but now the valley drive will face a third down but in Rams territory here and kind of again Justin in that zone where do you kick do you, do you go for it what do you want to do here and it looks like they're just going to keep the offense out and go for it on third and eight I think that is the play you're probably a little too far away from a field goal no sense in punting and at this stage of the game it's really not going to hurt you no matter what you do there's Fever to throw looks over the middle and passes off the mark and incomplete that'll be a turnover on downs here on Valley as the Ram defense will get off the field just over three minutes into this scoreless game. And a good start for the Langley defense here. You want to get into that rhythm early of shutting plays down. They did get caught by that little surprise play that put the ball in the hands of that lineman, but overall a fine start to this one for the Rams secondary. Jacob Davies in uniform along with Kremler, I believe, down there as well, but you would expect Jones to be the man here in this big contest. Trying to even up the series in series. These teams will meet twice, and this is the second. And now Jones, with the shotgun snap, had to use his legs. He goes down. Are they going to call this a fumble? I think down by contact will be the call. Good enough for a Rams first down as Jones stretched out the football to try and get a little extra yardage, and I think it was the turf that caused it to dislodge. Take another look at it on the replay oh, here. Oh, man, I don't know. Just... Oh, that is real close. 
as to whether that ball was loose before his Just, knees yeah, were down. Take it, another look at it here. Good luck from the guys in the truck. Watch the knee, knee down, then ball out, and I think that's a good call from the referees. Across I, the 50-yard line now for the Rams and a fresh set of downs. I think so, too. I th it's pretty instantaneous, but I do think the legs were down before that ball shook loose. Hassan in the backfield. He'll stay in there to block as Jones delivers, and Komia had one go through his hands, usually pretty sure-handed out there. For the Rams receiver, and Bronx has done a nice job catching the football. Good for over 20 yards per catch for him. Kind of the third receiver, I want to say, in behind Edwards and Terrell Jones. But Comey has had a nice season here and gets an opportunity early in this game and lets one slip through the fingers. That's a play where nine times out of ten that jones Tacomia connection is coming through on a pass like that. They set up a screen and look out, it's picked off. Huskers do the job defensively. Chase Lewins for the Huskers, the one to come up with that ball after it was batted in the air, tipped, and then he was able to come up with it. We'll take another look right here. Yeah, original hand on the football there from from Hogan, who tipped it up as Jones was trying to set up that screen. Might have needed to take a couple of more pedals backwards before letting that one fly as there was just no real separation between Hassan and his defender. And the old tip drill goes the way of the Huskers now inside Rams territory. Lineman really coming through for the Huskers early in this one. So Up far. under center, Rams showing blitz. They'll hand off into the backfield, but nice job to keep the motor going. And he'll pick up close to six along the ground as it looked like Langley was going to stop him for a loss. Uh, Wyke showing good speed there to the edge. You mentioned he's averaging north of seven yards per carry, and even though that carry does do some damage, picked up nearly five on that one, Langley still keeping him beneath his season average, at least so far in this So one. far, as they're inside the 40 now, down to the 38-yard line. And about five yards to go, as Justin said, as they dig in on the line of scrimmage. Four-man front here, shotgun snap. It's Wyke again, makes the cut, but stacked up and chopped down by Evan Nolly, who has really led the way for Langley defensively, Justin. 21 tackles, four sacks for what I think is going to be an all-star season here for Evan. And I do get the feeling, just in the way that they've been able to contain him so far in this game, that Rams spent a good amount of time this week, if I had to guess, watching film of Reese Wyke and what he likes to do. Here's Fever to throw, look to his left, now scrambles right, lobs one up for grabs, and it's brought in. What a catch. Tyson George Kelly, we're number zero, able to hang on to that ball. Oh, almost looked like zero gravity as he went up for that thing and brought it down under control. First down Valley after a spectacular catch from George Kelly. As they'll line up to this near boundary again, it's a first and 10 from the 18-yard line now for the Huskers marching here in this opening quarter. And you might be able to hear it. Valley wants timeout from the broadcast booth, and they'll get it down on the field in time before the snap of the football. And you never really want to use one that early in the game, especially on a first down play, Justin, but an important drive here early in this game. They want to establish a little momentum, and... I don't think they had the proper personnel on the field for the play they wanted to run, and they decided to call timeout. Sometimes what you have to do, even if you might not want to burn that timeout this early in a game, if you don't like what you're seeing, probably better safe than sorry to take a little break and hash it out. Try again. Nice crowd on hand here, Rams Nation. Of course, a lot of fans have made the trip in from the Valley as well, just down Highway Number One to beautiful McLeod Athletic Park here in the township to take in some BCFC football on a Saturday afternoon. So, out of the timeout, first and ten, Huskers nearly inside the red zone. Actually, they are inside the yes, red zone. They are tough down. to read the numbers sometimes. A lot, when we of, get lines. That a lot of lines on the field. All those lines. Here's yeah. Fever. Fake it. Option read. I'll fake the handoff and then get wrestled down to the ground. And a high tackle at that, but 
tackle made nonetheless as it looked like Malik Washington, the man to bring him down. Big number 90. And I'll bring up second down after a gain of, I want to say, four yards on that first down play. And if he were really a, a threat to run or pass the football, and that's what makes him a hard quarterback to defend. Play action as a roll near side. Looks back across the field. He's got a man way out to the wide side. He's wide open, and he dropped the football. Wow, that would have been an open lane all the way to the end zone. If he had been able to come up with that one, that was Reese Wyke once again, this time as a receiver, just not able just keep to an, scoop that one up. Keep, he was all alone out there. Keep an eye on 20 at the top side of your screen, and just you're not going to see him in this shot here, but he, there is nobody within 15 yards of him, and he's thinking about, I'm going to the house here before he caught the football and forgot to secure it, and he's going to hear about it from the Rams defenders after that as well as they line up. For a field goal, and it'll be White that's going to do the kicking here for the Huskers as well. What can't this kid hit? Low snap. They got it down. Kick is up, and kick is through. As the Huskers get on the board here first, it's been Saunders that has been handling the kicking duties for Valley, but White comes in for that short field goal attempt and knocks it through, and Valley is on the board first here. With a field goal at the halfway mark of this opening quarter. And I'm just amazed at the utility player that Reese Wyke has already demonstrated he is for this team in just the first few minutes of this game. Very impressive that your star running back is also one of the top receivers. Oh, and he kicks field goals as well. Not bad. Not too shabby. Husker defense is out and prepared as the Rams offense breaks the huddle. As they send out Ryan Gosen to the high wide side. Three receivers over there. In fact, two in the backfield here for Jones, who whispers a little something in Hassan's ear. As he'll take the shotgun snap, he'll swing it out, and there's another drop. And incompletion in the backfield. As I believe that one intended for Jones. And just couldn't get the hands around it. As Langley kind of looking for answers here against this Huskers defense early on where the matchups and holes will be is a nice job and coverage there from Mastin. So second and 10, got to get to the 45 for a first down here for the Rams. As they'll work from the left hash mark, same formation. And Jones will take the snap. He'll deliver the football, and it's high over the head of Comia. And just not sharp here early to start this football game for the Rams offense. Yeah, just a little out of rhythm because you would think Trey Jones had a little bit more time than maybe he realized to get that ball away. Well, and that's kind of one of the things I noticed early when preparing for this game, Justin, you look at the Rams defense, 11 sacks coming into this one, and, and that's one thing Valley has not really been able to do is get to the quarterback. And I think Jones needs just to settle himself down. Great punt here, and then contact on the kicker as well, and this is going to be an automatic Rams first down. Unless they call the five-yard variety, but I don't think so after the return back to the Rams 50-yard line. But contact on the kicker, back the flag at the 23. And I think this is going to keep the lane. We got a flag out to the far side of the field at the Huskers 43 as well on the return. But I think this is going to be an automatic first down here for Langley for roughing the kicker. Let's, well, this is going to be the second down play, the pass incompletion to Comia. But I'm not sure if we can get another look at the punt here. And the contact on the kicker. And yes, indeed, they're going to march off 15 yards here, Justin. That's a costly penalty on Valley. And if you are the Langley Rams, you have to make this second opportunity count. Whether or not you can march the ball all the way down the field on this drive, Jake, and find the end zone or even put the ball through the uprights, tie this game with a field goal. You need to get something, a little positive just momentum. Just a couple of first downs. Absolutely. Yeah. Even just some complete passes. Let Trey Jones get back into a rhythm and find his footing early in this contest. Well, it's Hassan in the backfield as Jones not in there for this play. As a four-man front here for Valley. 
Three in the box as well as they line up man-to-man -man on the outside. And Jones will throw it a swing pass. And that'll go nowhere as Gosen will just let that one drop and probably save a couple of yards on the incompletion. Or are they going to call it complete? I think they are. And that'll be a loss of about two yards. And Gosen probably should have just let that one slip through his fingers as there was nothing happening on the outside. And, you know, for a team... With two dominant running backs like Hassan and Jones, we just I think we've seen, what, just the one carry so far here along the ground for Langley so far. And they stare at a second 10. Here comes a blitz up the middle. It's picked up. Jones with all sorts of time. Slings one out. Completion made. Jones to Jones who went up for that one and brings it in across the 50-yard line. And Trey Jones put a little smoke on that one to get it to the wide side. That was the exact pass that he needed, not just to move the chains, but to get a little positive momentum back in his game. Mentioned earlier when he was looking for Brock's Comia that it was placed well, but just went right through his fingertips. Since then, the accuracy had been a little bit lacking from Trey Jones. Not the case, obviously, on that one. Oh, Langley way offside there. They don't call it. A little button hook. And there's Comia with another reception. Good enough for nine on the first down catch. But I really like the fact that Jordan McCarty designing that play for Jones to roll to his strong side, being a lefty, and come to this near sideline, throwing on the run. That motion, so much more fluid as a quarterback when you're throwing towards the same side as your throwing arm. Second down and short here. As Langley looking to keep this drive going, they'll hand off to Hassan. He'll bounce off a of one tackle, got spun down, and I'm not sure he got it. A hard hit on the interior just pinwheeled Hassan right at the line of scrimmage here. Yeah, I don't think he picked up anything there. Somebody missed a block. Started at the 40, ended at the 40, and that'll bring up third and short. Rams offense will stay out as Curtis Flynn on that last tackle. Stuck his hat right in there. And Jones will stay in the shotgun here on third down and less than a yard to go. Do they keep it in the quarterback's hands here? They'll hand off to Hassan. He'll lower the pads. And I think he's very close to it. Huskers think they stopped him. Let's check the spot here. Yeah, pushed back in the end, obviously. But how far did that momentum carry him before they were able to turn the tide? That is the real question here. I think you and where get... this ball is being spotted right now, I think... We're looking at a first no, they're down. Saying it's Valley football. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. They're not even going to measure. And how about it from the Valley Huskers stopping the Rams on not just second and short, but third and short as well. And two runs along the ground, unable to pick up the yard. We talked earlier in this quarter as well about how Langley had really not activated their running game of yet, anyways. Well, maybe that's why. Yeah, no kidding. The interior of that Huskers defense standing tall. We're getting low. One of the two and, and stopping up Hassan twice. There are some real big boys. Along the offensive line as well. Definitely on that Huskers side. It's on that Chilliwack corn out there, <laughs> Justin. I was about to say the same thing. <laughs> Good run for Wyke for close to eight, maybe nine. As they'll be just short of first down yardage. Well, it's the end of the fruit season as well. We probably got some peaches, some apricots, oh, yeah. little cherries. They're eating well out in the valley, yeah. that's for sure. Currently chewing up yards as well. Mm. Reese well, Wyke is, anyways. Well He's the one man wrecking crew at the moment, seemingly doing it all by himself. Well, second down and short. So now the Huskers face with just the. Well, very similar situation that Langley was just faced with a couple of moments ago. Can they convert on the second and short? Looked like Langley jumped. Wyke makes the cut. He's got the first down and more. As they'll pick up close to four along the ground, and that'll move the sticks here for Valley. And Langley getting away with some things at the moment as far as false starts, offsides, that sort of thing. They probably got away with one on their own offensive possession a little earlier. 
And it did look as though Howard Zhao jumped the gun on that play as well, but no flags on either of those. As, as we said, those flags have largely stayed tucked in the pocket so far for the officials in this one. Just over two minutes to go in this opening quarter. Looked like a little malfunction at the junction there between Fever and White because he wasn't sure whether to hand it off. I don't think White was whether he was sure whether to take it from him or not. And the play goes backwards on first down. I'll bring up second and 11. Rams just need to do that again. And they can probably send out the kick return crew. Obviously easier said than done, especially when Reese Wyke has been able to just... Well, passing down here, you would think. Put up the kind of yardage that he has so far. Ball just on the bottom of the township flag here at the 54-yard line of Valley. And Fever will take the shotgun snap and look deep. He's got a man in behind coverage, and the pass is just off the mark. That was Peyton Lake, the intended receiver oh, on man. that one. Right play call, all of it. It was there for the taking, and Fever... I think maybe a little guilty of throwing off his back leg there, Justin. Didn't really step into that throw, and it was off the mark as Lake was wide open in behind the Langley defense. And that's a couple times now where the Langley secondary has left that left side of the field entirely open. Obviously, the first time, play was coming towards the right, and as everybody shifted, uh, the quarterback for the Huskers obviously circled back the other way. That'd be Lucas Fever. But Huskers have had two punts blocked this season, and it's a direct snap. White going to run kick it as he angles it near sideline here, and it'll bounce out of the Rams' sideline right around the 35-yard line. Short kick for Valley as clearly they're working without their number one pivot and Duvall and without their primary kicker and Saunders here is the old rugby style kick from Wake on that one only went about 20 yards. Yeah, interesting formation on that. It kind of looked like a trick play initially, but as you said, that's more of a rugby style kick. I thought they might run the ball for a second, yeah. but obviously in a very uh, long situation. Well, drove there. past the Langley Rugby Club on the way to the stadium today. As Jones with one in the backfield. And he'll hand off again. Good hole this time for Jones as he slices through that Huskers defense for about a 14-yard gain. As he gets his first touch along the ground and makes good does Bruce Jones, who's averaging up over seven yards per carry himself. And Rams want to go quickly here with a little tempo after that good run from Bruce Jones. Jones is a star quarterback for this team. Jones is a star receiver. Jones is a star running back. They're probably selling Jones soda at the uh, concession stand as well. Oh, errant throw, and is it intercepted? I believe it is. Pass in behind his intended recipient, and after a little momentum was starting to peek through for Langley, Jones throws the pick as he was just, I don't know, about two yards in behind his intended recipient there, and right at the 55-yard line, Huskers able to bring it in. Ryan Gosen, obviously the intended target on that one. And as you said, he was probably about two and a half, three feet wide of that pass, which was placed perfectly, unfortunately, into the hands of the Huskers defender. This will be the final play of this opening quarter. This should make for a quick turnaround if there's no yards game here, as the teams can just essentially spin around and do a 180. As the ball right on the midfield stripe, but Fever trying to change that. Delivers a strike right over the middle of the football field. Close to the 45-yard line as they'll knock him back on forward progress. But that had some little Dijon mustard on it from Lucas Fever right there as he just fired it right in. Right in between the numbers for the completion. And I believe that was actually Gideon Kremlner playing some defensive minutes here. Making the tackle for the Rams on that one. So that's the end of one quarter of play here from McLeod Athletic Park. And a low scoring one it was. Just a 3-0 lead here for the Valley Huskers. On the completed field goal attempt from White. So 15 down, 45 to go. Your thoughts on that opening 15, Justin? Obviously not the way the Rams probably drew it up coming into this one, but they're only down by three points, and they have to be heartened by that at this stage in the game. You've thrown a couple of interceptions. Obviously, Trey Jones a little bit out of sync to start this, but plenty of time to turn it around, and you have not put yourself in any kind of hole as of yet either. 
Well, start the second quarter. Huskers will start it inside Rams territory at the 45-yard line from the left hash. As they go quad receivers to the wide side, Fever will deliver quickly. They're trying to set up a wide receiver screen and cut down. After about a four-yard gain along the ground is Kremler in there for another tackle. The Rams' third quarterback on the depth chart, I would say. I believe he's playing safety today. Just watch him stick his hat in here at the end of this play. Good wrap-up. Goes low. He's done that before. And it's a second down and five now as they'll go from the right hash this time. White split out. As Fever. Time in the pocket. Now he's flushed. Looking upfield. Trying to stretch this play out. And he'll be wrapped up deep in the backfield and dropped for a six-yard loss. As Langley gets home to the Huskers pivot. And that'll bring up third and long. Tackle probably shared by number 27, Drew Larag, as well as 33, Howard Jow. Both of them getting at the quarterback on that play. There was just good coverage. Call it a coverage sack, Justin. There's just nothing downfield for Fever to look for. And, you know, it may look like a bit of a bad play there, taking a six, six yard loss on a sack, but better than turning the football over and giving up field position. Absolutely. Better take that sack than put that ball up and have it get picked off. Rams, as they run the direct snap, are they going to try and run this for a first down? He's got blockers out in front, but he's not going to get there as he'll come up about three yards short. And Langley will get the football back on the turnover on downs as they tried to fake this one. And Langley did a pretty good job of navigating that. Well, I mentioned earlier that kind of rugby kicking formation was a little tough to read on that last punt for the Huskers. Looked like they might have tried to run that one or gone with some kind of trick passing play. This time, they do indeed go for the run, and Langley able to successfully stop it. See if they go back to Bruce Jones along the ground here. They will. As he'll run right up the middle, and he'll get close to five as he's pushed ahead. And now it'll be second down here for Langley as they get the ball out to the 43-yard uh, line here. Huge it. credit to Curtis Flynn on that play as well. He is the man at the bottom of that pile of bodies for the Huskers who was just able to wrap up the ankle from the ground. He was already down but was able to grab that ankle and stop that play. Pressure off the edge as it's not going to be enough for Langley first down there as... Terrell Jones made the completion, but will come up about three, four yards short of the marker, and Langley will have to kick away here as the offense continues to sputter here as we move our way into the second quarter. Bruce Jones, though, would have been off to the races on that first down. I think that would have been at least a good 20-yard pickup had he been able to break loose of the line of scrimmage. So Curtis Flynn, despite the fact he was down and out, showed great awareness, able to stop that play. When you look at it coming into this game, Langley has scored 286 points. They've surrendered 100. Valley, 254. They've given up 176. And there's just not going to be too much between these two teams here today, I believe. And they're going to call no yards here on Langley, and that was borderline in my opinion. As he looked like he had plenty of room, and this will be caught in the air. So this is going to be a free 15-yard penalty here for Valley on the no yards call. As that's, yeah, let's have a look here. Yeah, maybe he's four yards, I guess. He's, he's right on the borderline. I'm just heartened by the fact we haven't seen too many of those flags so far in this one, but almost don't want to point that out and push my luck. Happy to see them use orange flags here today on Truth and Reconciliation Day. And lots of orange throughout the crowd here today in Langley as well. And that's another big penalty there, this time against the Rams. Free 15 yards for Valley as they'll move the ball out to the 52-yard line here for a first and 10 in between the hash marks. Fever claps the hands. He'll fake it, and we got procedure here, I believe, on Valley. And that is, in fact, the call as they blow that play down before it even got started. Back him up five yards, make it first and 15. 
I said I was reluctant to even point out we hadn't seen too many flags. It's all today. your fault. Well, hey, that one went against the Huskers, so maybe I should be pointing them out a little more. We'll see. By the way, if you do want to be interactive and get at us during the broadcast or any time for that matter, you can follow Justin Morris via Twitter at Justin Morris, 1R1S. And yours truly at PXP, the number four sports, if you'd like to be interactive during today's football game. Fever, a deep shot, got a man open, completion made at the 40, and trying to dance around his man at the 35. He'll be pushed out of bounds around the 31-yard line after a big strike there. TJ Robertson able to come up with that snag for the Huskers, and that long bomb on the outside edge has been open for the Huskers a few times. They just haven't been able to hit it with accuracy to this point, but obviously that was uh, right on the money. That Somebody got lost in coverage right there as, again, T.J. Robertson coming wide open deep in the secondary, which gives them a fresh set of downs as they look to this near boundary this time. Completion made, but tackle made immediately by Drew Larag as he was right on the scene and wrapped up quickly. I was almost trying to send a message with his body language. Larag after that tackle, standing him up and towering him, towering over him after the fact as well. So a five yard loss on the wide receiver swing pass there. We'll bring up a second down in close to 15 as they got to get down to the 21 for a first down. Not the first big tackle of the day for Drew Larag either, and I would hazard to guess, Jake, probably not the last either. Well, let's call it 14 to go. Quad receivers to the high side as Fever evades one, throws into traffic, and it's knocked out of bounds. Good defense there. Kenneth Belukos, the one-time Carson Graham Eagle, coming up big in this one. One of your favorites, I know, Justin. As, uh, by the way, you mentioned it's been a while since we've kind of been together. Thanks to you, to uh, Jay Prepchuk, to Warren Flash Andrews, uh, voice of the Valley Huskers, who filled in for yours truly. What a busy summer this, this summer, Justin. A lot, a lot of, of lacrosse. A lot of lacrosse, a lot of traveling, and uh, miss the last couple of Rams games. Good to be back here at McLeod. Here's Fever to throw. Puts it up, and it's knocked away again. Good defense from Langley as Kyle Hewish gets his name on the board as that one may be a little underthrown there from Fever and allowed Langley to close the gap to break up that passing play in time. Well, kind of a jump ball situation there, and Hewish able to knock it loose. I guess my that's first a turnover on downs there. Excuse me, Justin. All good. I was just going to say this is my first time uh, getting back here to McLeod to see the team since that loss to the West Shore Rebels uh, a few weeks Well, back. I don't think anyone's played West Shore any tougher all season. Oh, no, absolutely not. They, they were outstanding in that game. They probably got hosed by uh, a, a call that should have been downed before it was called a touchdown as well. Oh, that man. is, in all probability, a game that Langley should have tied, if not won. Uh, Just watch this replay here, Justin, on Cairo Hassan. I want to get I'll, you get back to your point here, but watch the shoestring tackle right there. Otherwise, Hassan is still running. I know that you weren't here for that one as well, Jake, but uh, Kyle Hewish and Kenneth Belukos both were absolutely massive in that game and both have made an impact in this second quarter as well. Second and six, empty backfield for Jones, delivers. He's on the mark here for Edwards. He reaches for the 45-yard line. Let's check the spot. And I think they're going to mark him down a half a yard short on a first down saving tackle here on Isaiah Edwards. Mm, man. That is awful close. And I think they're going to kick. I don't think they want to mess around after getting stuffed a couple of times in the first quarter. They're on their own side of the football field here. And normally I think this would be a situation where Jordan McCarty and company would go without hesitation. But not here, not in this situation, as they'll bring out Malcolm Cameron to punt the football away. Great desperation effort, though, from Isaiah Edwards, who I don't even know if he was down necessarily. His legs hadn't touched the ground as he was on top of the defender. And it actually might be Taron. But look out, this ball skipping away. Look, oh, man. And what are they calling there? What are they calling there? Oh, man, this cannot be a penalty. He touched the foot. What are they calling? 
What are they calling? That is... <laughs> he not only touched it when he didn't grab it, he had since picked up the football. That was a tackle to stop the play. It wasn't a high tackle. It wasn't a dirty tackle. I don't... Like, what? I've seen some curious calls in the BCFC. That might rank right at the top of the list I, right there. I think they might be rescinding the penalty. No, I, no penalty? Penalty rescinded. Okay. Thank goodness. Yeah, that is the right call there. My word. All right. <laughs> we can calm down. <laughs> First and 10. Wyke on the carry. Trying to find the corner. Noe's there. And still keeping the legs moving here and picked up significant yardage on a second and maybe even a third effort. Well, you, you can't blame us for getting a little heated at that potential call there because, I don't know, call it PTSD perhaps. We've, we've seen some, some rough ones. Well, just look some at this. Some real questionable stuff. You don't see Evan Nolly lose a tackle very often right there, but Wyke's so powerful, able to get away from 44 and pick up close to six yards. Looked like he was going to be stopped for virtually no gain. Still just 3 nothing in this football game as Fever looks to throw. He's got a man open, turn it upfield, good enough for a first down and more as he's out near the 34-yard line on the completion. Nicely done there from Luke Rodriguez. As we are past the halfway mark in this second quarter as well, you're, you're right, this is just a 3 nothing football game, but it doesn't feel like that. No. Lots of excitement, lots of intensity. Two very evenly matched regional rivals. Yeah, and like I said earlier off the top, with Langley and Okanagan playing one last game than everybody else, both teams will make the playoffs. We know that, as will these Valley Huskers. He has a quick handoff up the middle. Good haul. And then cut down hard in the secondary there as Wake will give him a pat on the hat as Kremler making another stop, but... We don't know how things are going to shake out. If Langley loses this game to Valley today, then essentially I don't think it matters a whole lot. If they win and they win by more than eight, then I think there's a lot to be discussed and decided between the four playoff teams on who's going to play who and where they're going to play and all the rest of it. Unfortunate that that Okanagan-Langley game is not going to be made up. Yeah. I think for, for both teams' cases, right, with Okanagan sitting at 5-1, and one, you know, they still, they still have some big games on the horizon here, and you always look forward to a Rams-Sun matchup as well, and we're just not going to get it this season unless it comes during playoff time. But with West Shore being 8-0, and oh, you got to think those three teams of the Sun, the Rams and the Huskers, are jockeying to avoid playing West Shore in that opening round of the playoffs. Of course, Langley, as we said, showed very well against the oh, Rebels already this season. A tip drill falling into the hands of the Huskers receiver. And what a fortunate break that was for Mora as that thing changed direction and landed right between the hands of Mora off the tip. Watch this. It looked like Langley had a chance to pick this thing off. And they got a hand on it, but tipped it right to Mora for a huge game here for the Huskers. Drew Larag able to get that hand on it, and he's probably wishing he hadn't now. I don't think it was going to go way incomplete if he didn't. But I tried to make the interception. Now with five minutes to here to go in halftime, it's first and ten. Another quick throw. Oh, look out, little Statue of Liberty action. Wide open. Down to the goal line. Touchdown, Valley. Huskers with some trick plays in this one as Peyton Lake is going to be credited with the touchdown pass. He's the one who hauled that one in way out. And then got that ball up in the air again, looking towards the end zone. How about the play call? We do have a flag on the play, however, and we'll see oh my. if this one's going to come back. It's down at the 32-yard line here of Langley, right near the line of scrimmage. There's actually one across the field at the 30-yard line as well as all the officials in to talk about this one. Big call coming right here. Oh, 
a legal forward pass on the Huskers. Take the touchdown off the board. Oh, wow. And back up Valley as Peyton Lake must have been across the line of scrimmage by the time he threw that ball. But that's not the case. Is it a forward pass? Oh, yeah. It's a forward it pass is. from Fever. And then it's a double. So it's a double forward pass. Fever has got to throw that thing laterally to have, allow Peyton Lake to be able to throw that ball upfield. Very close there. But you can watch the release where the ball came out of the hands of Fever. That was like the old Music City miracle between Tennessee and, and Buffalo back in the day where nothing went for it, but they called it a lateral. That thing, I think, was about a yard upfield. Yeah, maybe three-quarters of a yard or so. Quite close. But. Long way to go. They'll throw another deep ball up the middle of the field, and it's over everybody and incomplete. And it'll bring up second down and 20 to go. Pretty good delivery here from Fever, though. Got a good arm on it, but better coverage in the secondary from the Rams that time. And now we'll see what they call here with the ball at the 47-yard line here at Langley, second down and 20. And they're in the middle of the field. Fever looks over the middle again. He's got a completion as he tries to bounce to the outside, powering his way up here. He'll be short of the first down, but very manageable now to potentially go for this third down and short. Got about, what, five, six to go here? Another important reception for T.J. Robertson, who's come up with some key grabs, particularly here in the second quarter. But, yeah, this is third and about five yards to a fresh set. I'll say I'm not a huge fan of having a hooded sweatshirt on underneath your football jersey. I don't know what they call there. Somebody grabs onto that thing trying to make a tackle. That's dangerous. Beaver going to throw... And completion made and stretching for the first down and fighting for more yards on top of that is George Kelly, who just would not be denied, and he'll move the sticks here for the Huskers. Agent Zero moving the chains yet again and that's, for the Huskers. That's a play and a tackle. And we got a Rams defender who looks a little shaken up on the play right now. I believe that was Jacob Davies, or it's Belukos, excuse me, that had a chance to make that play. But there you get a look at the hood coming out of the back. Like, what do you call that a horse collar tackle if you grab, if you grab that on that hood? Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, never mind the danger factor. Things can get wrapped up, twisted in there. Like, I, I don't think that should be allowed. Should just not be allowed to have a hood coming out of the back of your football jersey. And the injured Ram on the play looks like it is Kenneth Belukos as well. So he's off on the sideline, but has not been able to move more than really three feet or so off the field. I do want to make mention here that today's 50-50 jackpot going to the family of Rick O'Brien, the RCMP officer that was shot in the line of duty last week in Coquitlam, and it's a massive pot that you can get in on. As Wyke on the handoff bounces to the outside, and he'll pick up close to seven. And they'll mark him down at the, what, 16-yard line here, it looks like. Kyle Hewish. Getting into it with David Coronado for the Huskers. That one was well away from the play. In fact, along the sideline, they were jawing at each other pretty good. And they're still working on Belukos on this near sideline back around the 25-yard line. As it's second down and short here to go for Valley as Fever will hand off to White because he'll drive it up into the pack. And just keeps the motor moving here, pushing the pile inside the 10-yard line as this kid's got some power in his legs. And that is enough to move oh, the look sticks. Out, look out here. I believe anyways. Lucky a flag did not come flying there at the end of that play. But it will be enough for another Huskers first down here. Just look at the mass of humanity shoving Wyke forward here, just never giving up on that play. They got another four yards out of it. 
And this is not a first and goal situation either. The ball spotted at about the 10 and a half. And essentially it is, Justin. And they're so going to move it up. If they can get to it down to inches, they might get a fresh set of downs I, again. I think they just moved that football forward six inches to make it a first and goal from the 10-yard line. Essentially, you can drop that front stick. But Langley trying to keep him out of the end zone here as Valley had that illegal forward pass taking a touchdown off the board as they try and get back into the end zone here. Favor on the rollout delivers a low pass and it'll go for no gain. As Sean Cullen in on the tackle there for Langley to stop that one up. As Fever just kind of delivered that football a little too low and unable to do anything with it after he had made the catch. Brandon Halsey able to haul that one in. But as you said, could really go nowhere with it. Baluko's going to come back into this football game after getting some treatment. Yes. He looks to be walking just fine, which yeah, is a bit of a surprise I, after that ankle and shin was getting all kinds of attention from the medical trainers. I think I was calling Taryn Birdie. Malcolm Cameron earlier, I believe that is Birdie down there wearing 28 today. As Fever looks to throw into the end zone on the out pattern and incomplete. As he tried to drop it in between two Ram defenders on a pretty well thrown ball there. Looking for Cognac. Well, just couldn't quite wrap the hands around it as it falls to the blue turf, but they'll come out to line up another field goal here. And try and make this a 6 nothing lead with just 136 here to go in this opening half. That was about as close as it gets without actually being a touchdown. I guess it could get even closer and have it walked back as the Huskers have already seen that today. But uh, that pass looked like it was right on the money. And the Rams lucky that that one fell incomplete. Well, looks like the right-footed kicker here, White, will line it up from the 16. And angles it up and through. Two for two. Six nothing Huskers. Not the way Reese Wyke probably would have liked to put six points up on the board so far in this one, but I think he will take it. And with 93 seconds remaining in the opening half, the Huskers up by a touchdown, essentially uh, off two field goals. Yeah, I mean, I think Valley going to be a little bit disappointed they come away with just three there and I think Langley probably pretty happy to just surrender three on that last drive from Valley. If the Rams cannot find the end zone or put up points in the next 90 seconds they at least need to generate some positive momentum that they can carry with them over into the second half. And not much time to get it down the field here. It's Hassan on the carry and he's tripped up right near the line of scrimmage. And Cairo Hassan has been a huge difference maker for this team over the course of the season, but the Huskers just have his number today. But I feel like they are very close to breaking a big one. Like that last run again, just shoestring tackle to save some big yardage here. So, I, like, I don't want to see him get away from the run because I think there's some potential there to break off a big one or two. Blitz up the middle. Jones, the throw, a one-handed catch from Camilla. But again, right on the scene to make the tackle and limit the gain was Maston. And Langley, quick, two and out, will have to punt the football away. Wind has been stymied. You don't normally see that against this Rams offense. They just haven't really unlocked the puzzle yet on what is going to be effective against this Huskers' really aggressive defense. I think you got to give Valley a, a lot of a lot of credit here, along with head coach Bob Reese, to have seemingly designed a really good game plan here in this opening half, and you know, just six nothing lead here. But I think football such a game of adjustments, and we'll see who makes the better ones at halftime coming out for that second half. Well, I think if you're the Huskers, you kind of want to just keep doing what you're doing and feel but that you know, you're going to break through. Yeah, but I think they know, and I think Langley know, like they're not going to keep doing the same thing. So Valley has to be prepared for them to make some changes. And like if, if it was that easy, <laughs> you know what I mean? I know what you're saying. Yes, absolutely. 
Langley's not going to just keep doing the same thing. So no, Valley's not going to be able to keep doing the but same But you're thing. right. They have done a great job of just smothering this offense in the early stages. Low snap. Birdie handled it well. Got a decent kick away. It's caught at the 45-yard line. Spinning out of one tackle. Trying to work his way to the 50. And pushed out of bounds there. Is, looks like everybody will separate. And on the return, it was Rolak the third. And again, pretty decent field position here, but just 60 seconds to go in this opening half. Let's not forget also, Justin, that Valley will get the ball to start the second half as well. Oscars with a pair of interceptions in this opening half as well. But I don't know how much. Well, I think that's kind of been the difference, the yeah, turnovers, right? Absolutely. Well, let's see. How aggressive they want to get here late in this first half. Fever looking deep down the sideline and trying to draw a flag, but incomplete. I was just going to say, if you're, if you're looking at the way that the running game maybe hasn't materialized for the Rams so far in this one, I think that is because the Huskers have done a great job of shutting it down. The passing game, meanwhile, though, Jake, I know they have had those two interceptions, like I said. It feels like the Rams have just been a little bit out of sync from the get-go in this one. Yeah as far as passing goes, unfortunately. But I think you got to give Valley the credit there. Kind of throwing them. Throwing them a different look. Yeah. But, yeah. Second down and 10. Fever, empty backfield. Three-step drop over the middle. Completion made. Tackle made, but not until a first down here for the Huskers. As that is really where they found some success here against this Rams defense is They've tested the outer boundaries a, a few times, but they're finding their completions over the middle, kind of in that second layer, just in behind the linebackers, but in front of the defensive backs. First and 10, Fever looking to this near side, lobs one out, and it's complete at the 30-yard line on Koniaku. Courageously made that catch, but that is a long throw. That ball up in the air for a long time there for Fever. Jaden Severy and Drew Lareg combining on that tackle for the Rams to stop that play from going even further. And 38 seconds to go. Clock moving. Another first down here. Quick strike. It's complete. Trying to fight his way out of bounds, and he will. Great strength shown there from T.J. Robertson, who shows up again and stops the clock with 30 seconds to go. Yeah. Valley really clicking here on this drive. Not just picking up a good seven and a half yards on that grab, but also halting the clock with 30 seconds left, as you said, Jake. That's a situation where Langley's just got to go low on the ball carrier there and drag him down inbounds, do whatever you can to keep that clock moving in that situation. It, it just feels astonishing that Langley took possession on their last drive with 93 seconds left on the clock. Two with 63 seconds after that, and look where the Huskers have gotten themselves back in terms of field position. Play action. Fever will roll out. Noli got picked off. Fever trying to scramble to the far sideline. He's got some speed out there, and he'll step out of bounds around the 12-yard line and stop the clock once again. After nine seconds comes off, his fever showing off his legs this time. He picks up a fresh set of downs as well. You have to think that the Huskers will just look to throw three straight times here if it takes that many tries to find the end zone. Oh, ball on the 11. 21 seconds to go in the half and timeout Langley. As they want to talk about this final 21 seconds here. Trailing six to nothing. Huskers are going to get the ball to start the second half. And they're knocking on the door trying to make this a two-score game. And credit to the Langley defense so far. They have done a great job of shutting the Huskers down in situations exactly like this one. Of course, you can only play with fire for so long before you get burned. And the Rams have to hope they can escape the next 21 seconds before the half without surrendering a touchdown. It's one of those things, again, as we've said with those last two field goals as well, you'd prefer to not surrender any points at all. But when you are in a red zone situation like this and only concede the three instead of the seven, 
that still feels like something yeah, of a win I unto itself. Would be real happy to get out of here just surrendering another three points. Valley looking for the jugular here. They want the major going into the locker room. And they're 11 yards away, but just 21 seconds to complete. Fever up under center for this first and goal. He'll hand off to White, stretching it out. Cuts it back up, and he'll get down to about the six as a late flag comes in. And this could be a costly one. As I didn't see anything too egregious, but let's watch the replay here and see if we can pick up where the flag might have come in. I think a hold right there on 82. Yeah. And that drives him right into well. the turf as well. That's the only thing I can think of on what we just saw, but we'll see what they announce here. So this should back up Valley 10. You would think. I don't think you decline the penalty in that situation and bring up a second down. I think you back him up 10 yards, give him another first down, get him further away from your end zone, and now 15 seconds to go. Well, let's see what Jordan McCarty and company want to do if that is, in fact, the call here. Holding. Which it is. Huskers. Penalty is declined. Well, they do Second decline it, Justin. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that was a five, six-yard gain there on first down. I know it's second down now, but, man, I think I back him up to the 21 there and take my chances with another three downs. Yeah, it's not like they're putting the seven seconds back on the clock, right? That's Here's kind the, of. Yeah, over the middle into the end zone, complete. Touchdown, Valley. And that's why I, I think a curious call there from the Rams coaching staff. I'll just say, I think you accept that penalty all day, every day, and back them up. But you, now you allow. Especially with the time on the clock. Because, yeah. yes, you're giving them first down again, but you've already chewed up seven seconds by running that play. That was really the the clock is what they're up against right now more than anything, and unfortunately. Uh, Coronado in behind. That very next play leads to a David Coronado touchdown, the first TD of the game that will, in fact, count. And they will punch through the extra point as well. And just like that now, it's 13-0, and just seven seconds left to go in the half. And this game far from over, I will say that. Like, I don't think, like, don't go anywhere here with a 13-0 score. But I don't know if you can draw up a better opening half here for a road team coming into Langley going into the breakup 13-0. Especially two teams that we talked about being very evenly matched. And I think they have been evenly matched over the course of this half as well. Well, we'll get the stats from our man Patrick at halftime. But I don't think they're going to be too skewed. Well, I think the passing yards will clearly be in favor of Valley, but other than that, I think it's been pretty even. Turnovers have been an issue as they just haven't capitalized on their on their drives here, but they're also one score away from making this a, a real close football game. Here. So I don't, I, you know, nothing. Uh, I don't, I don't mean to sound about. down on the Rams at all. I think they played pretty well. They just have maybe have been a bit unlucky over the course of this one. Well, Wink will tee it up at the 45-yard line. As the shadows creeping across the field here, they'll angle a high one to the far sideline and almost miss playing that one. He'll take it up to 22. A flag comes in. And runner goes down. Just three seconds to go in the half. And let's see what the penalty call is. As it was Tedesi on the return, and the penalty call is against Langley, in fact, which will back him up another 10 yards here. And probably a situation now, Justin, where you just want to take the knee and get to the locker room. I think so, yeah. The yard line here of Langley. And I don't think you have too many plays in the playbook here for a, a 96-yard touchdown in three seconds. But they do oh, line up. <laughs> they do the before they down the sideline. It will be a handoff, in fact. And that'll end open 30 minutes here from McLeod Athletic Park. 
A great opening half here for the road team. As they'll take a 13-0 lead into the locker room with 30 minutes to play here. Which we'll have for you in just 15 minutes from now as we'll take a break on BCFC TV. And I'll be back with first half analysis stats. And we'll get you teed up for half number two from Langley. When we return in under 15 minutes from now, keep it right here. And we'll talk to you for second half action shortly.
Football fans, we are back. We are live inside McLeod Athletic Park as halftime winding down here. As the two teams come back out onto the football field to begin second half action with Valley, the Huskers leading 13 0 here over the Langley Rams as the Rams will kick off to start half number two. And they just wipe out the final minute of the break as we are lined up and set to go. Jay Kelly, Justin Moore, set with you. Kick it off. Let's play some football as it bounces down to the 15-yard line. And the Huskers find a seam up the far side of the football field, hurtling over bodies out past the 50. And what a return on the opening kickoff from Ethan Porter, who brings it all the way back out near midfield. That's the start that Valley was looking for and the start that Langley was not. Yeah, we were talking about adjustments needing to be made ahead of the second half for really both teams. The Huskers needed to adjust if they wanted to keep a good thing going, and Langley obviously trying to get something started in this one. Not the start that the Rams were hoping for, but we'll see if the defense can shut this down real quick. We'll get to some halftime stats here momentarily as well as White pounds it up the middle for close to a four-yard gain as... 13 nothing here, Valley leading, and Langley may be fortunate that it's not a little bit more than that. As Langley, the only thing I think they are leading is in the first down category, four to two after a half a play, but 87-41 in rushing, 201 to 29 in passing, 284 to 70 in total yards. Both teams with three turnovers in that opening half. Will counter or block there up the middle, and I think about two yards short of the marker to gain. As they'll spun it down on the 50, they got to get to the 48, which brings up third down. That feels unbelievable, though. The Valley only put up two first downs in that entire opening half. 284 yards of offense on two first downs. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me either. But White with 13 carries for 60 yards. And Fever in that opening half, 10 for 24 for 201 to go along with a touchdown. He stares at a third down here as Langley crowds a line of scrimmage. It's White to the first down marker, and I think he's got it. Looked like he picked up a good two and a half at least, and all he needed was two. Uh, so I don't know how you stop that guy from picking up two yards. He just seems like he could gain that at will. So a good opening drive to start here. It started with a close to a 50-yard return on the opening kickoff out to the midfield stripe from Porter. 13 carries for Wyke in that opening half as well. 61 yards. First down and 10 for Fever. He'll bring a man across the formation. He'll throw it to him. 
As they'll try and turn it upfield, and he's got some yardage there, close to another 10 yards from Conniac. Who just found a little seam on that slot out pattern. Just kind of picked his way through the Rams defense there for close to 10. And I'll give him nine and a half, make it second and short. And if Langley wants to come back in this football game, uh, giving up points here on the opening drive of that third quarter would be very detrimental to that effort. And now they got a second and short here. And it's eight in a quarterback on the keeper as he runs it to the right. And I think he's got enough as the whistle goes. And maybe it came a little bit late. But it's T.J. Robertson on the quarterback keeper. He's made some big-time grabs for this team throughout that opening half and comes up with a pretty important run, even if it's short yardage situation. He did move the sticks, and that is ultimately what he needed to do. Fever back into the game. 26-18, the final in week one of the BCFC season. And that game being played out at Rotary. Might have been exhibition, my apologies. Says a completion made on first down. And then spun down was Peyton Lake after a gain of close to five. And it just doesn't feel, Jake, like the Rams are making any stops right now. No, they're kind of caught in between, right? They can't get pressure to the quarterback. They can't seem to match up man-to-man. -man. You don't know whether to go into zone, and then they got these little dink and dunk plays that they can run against you, and they've just kind of... Pick kept up Langley. five yards on seemingly every play, it feels like. Yeah, they've kind of kept Langley's defense off guard. Now they take a deep shot over the middle, and it's through the hands and incomplete. Intended for Tyson George Kelly, number zero. He's come up with some important grabs as well over the course of this one, but that one just sails right through his fingers. Yeah, that looked like a pretty good ball there from Fever and one that George Kelly probably should have caught. But it brings up a third down now, but the offense will go nowhere here for Valley. They're staying out in the field here for this third and five. And they'll keep it right in between the hash marks. Big play here early in the third quarter here for both these teams. Shotgun snap, fever over the middle into traffic, completion made, and another Huskers first down. And a confident throw and catch there. From Lucas Fever to T.J. Robertson. Robertson doing it again as he has become probably the most important target in this one, which I know feels silly to say in a game that has been dominated by Reese Wyke, but Wyke doing the bulk of his damage as a running back. And Robertson just coming up with big grab after big grab. Another first down. They'll pitch it to Wyke this time. He tried to make a move at the line of scrimmage. And Noli and company in there to stuff that one pretty quickly for a gain of maybe one. And I'll bring up second and nine with the clock going under 10 minutes to go here in the third quarter as Fever out as they make changes here for this second and long. And Fever just over to get the play call from the sideline as he'll hustle back in. And they'll just line it up here, so an, a bit of an audible. As they'll bark out the signals here for this second and nine from the 15-yard line. Everything loaded up to this near side, and Fever just going to take a knee as a flag comes in as well. And did Langley jump offside before the snap of the football? I don't think so. I think this one's going against Valley, and out comes the field goal unit or the punt team here. I'm not sure which one quite yet. Uh, Lucas Fever basically just sacked himself. Looked like he blew a tire, lost an edge on that left ankle, and went down before the contact came in. If you're so. going to get sacked, Justin, <laughs> the worst way to do it is to sack yourself. <laughs> that is true indeed. So Wyke will line it up here from the 29-yard line. T.J. Robertson spotting that ball. Got the ball down. Ball is up, and through it goes. How about it from Wyke? Reese Wyke now three for three in the field goal department. But still just a two-score game here, Justin, at 16 nothing now, but... First drive of the second half results in points 
for Valley. And the Rams, just check out this 50-50 pot here quickly. Over 3,400 as it continues to grow here. As all proceeds going to RCMP officer killed in the line of duty to his family and Rick O'Brien, who Rick was here in 2019 and was forced to hand over the Canadian Bowl trophy, if you'll recall, Justin, back in 2019 to those no good, stinking, dirty, rotten, Saskatoon Hilltops instead of the Langley Rams that year. Tough one. Yeah, absolutely. Did I mention dirty rotten? <laughs> no good. Hilltops. But somebody who, who did have ties to this Langley Rams organization, and yep. it is nice to see the team give back to his family at this obviously unimaginably difficult time. Here's Jones scrambling, looking downfield. He's going to try and run for it. Almost lost the football, but does get out of bounds on his feet. You've been but. surprised to see Trey Jones back in the pocket to start this second half? Well, yeah, I mean, because I don't know if I'm hanging this all on Trey Jones. I, I'm not opening half either. I'm not either. I just maybe a little change of pace or a different look might be in order. I mean, yeah, you don't have any points on the board. We yeah. know this. Yeah. So... Maybe it's time to have a look at Bougie or, or Kremler or Davies or, or one of these other guys just to maybe give Jones a, a break and to get him to look at the game from a different point of view as Taron Birdie will get the punt away. And it's a sidewinding kick down inside the 35. Return on here up the middle with a head of steam. And again, it's Rolak the third, but... This has kind of been the story here for Langley today. Valley starting their drives. At the midfield. Back. At the midfield stripe for more often than not here. They have not had a long field to try and go down, I don't think, once in this game. Yeah, it really feels like as well the that the Rams have had a hard time even getting the ball to midfield, which is where the Huskers seem to be starting on a consistent basis. And... Trey Jones' throwing ability has been a consistent strength of this team all season long. But just a little bit out of sync today. And that's not just him. It's probably the receivers as well. Something just looks a little funky. And I agree with you. They do need a bit of a shot in the arm. And whether that's Max Bougie or Gideon Kremler, I wouldn't necessarily be surprised to see a different quarterback just come in. And it, not just to give Trey a break either, but to maybe try to send a message to the rest of the team as well. Another good run for Reese White, who takes it for 12 and will move the sticks again here for Valley, who, again, we talked about it. Like, I think Langley's kind of thinking pass when they're running, run when they're passing. You know, they're going right when they're going left. They've just had them off kilter here most of the day as White runs it to the left this time. And another positive gain on first down for the Huskers running back, who will pick up another five. He did come into this game, as we mentioned, before kickoff. He's got to be close to 100 yards on the ground now. Averaging about 7.5 yards per carry over the course of the season. The Rams were doing a good job of containing him below that in the early going, but I have to think that average is climbing again as the game goes on. Well, we've seen Bougie warming up early in the third quarter. Now Davies taking some reps along the sideline here as Sean Cullen scampering back to the sidelines right now for the Rams, stepping a little gingerly as his right ankle appears to be in a bit of discomfort. And well, these Rams quarterback backups continue to warm up. Jones having a word with the quarterback coach on a knee on the sideline and you just kind of wonder what that conversation entailing right now. We're the number one man for Langley, who has just been unable to get the Rams offense started here this afternoon. And now down to 22 minutes of gameplay left, trailing 16 nothing. And it's a third down here for Valley. Who? I think are going to take a bit of a conservative approach here now, Justin. Leading 16 to nothing in Rams territory at the 40-yard line, and they bring out the punt team. But another funky formation here. They'll snap it, and they'll kick it. 
A vertical kick here that'll bounce down and take a Rams bounce back up the field here. They'll pounce on that. They'll get the no yards, a five-yard variety. But again, a long field to go here for Langley. That's probably the most conventional punt that we've seen from the Huskers so far today as they've had a bit of a wacky formation in special team yeah. situations like this. We saw a lot of rugby-style kicks in that opening half. Oh, they'll bring the ball out to the 21-yard line here. And can this Rams offense get going? Scored close to 300 points so far in seven games, but they sit on a goose egg right now. And it's not as though they've been knocking on the door and been denied. They really have not been no, close I mean, to the red zone today. Even in their two losses. Yes, there's a good hole for Hassan, who's met right in it, however, and stopped in his tracks immediately after about a three-yard gain. And I think that's something Valley has done very well today is tackle. They just have not missed a lot of tackles. But you look at these scores here. For Langley, the 26-18 loss, we talked a lot about that, but then they put up 54 against VI. They put up 36 against Kamloops. Even in a loss to West Shore, they got 21. Then 62, then 39, then 56. This offense has scored some points here for Langley, but not today as Jones with a free play launches down. It's up for grabs. It's picked off. But I think this is going to be a penalty call here on Valley as the play will continue. Rox Comey and coming up with the tackle, but as you said, I do believe this is going to be a flag that does go against the Huskers. And he had Edwards in behind, but throwing on the run was Jones and just couldn't get enough arm strength on it to get it over the outstretched hands. And this one likely going to be walked back, but still three interceptions over the course of a single contest from Trey Jones. It's just not something that we see all too often out here in Langley. It was Mastin on the pick. But all for naught. As they'll put the ball down on the 30 yard line here. And it'll be second down. Are they going to flip that yard or down marker over? I think it's second down and two to go. And Langley has had their issues in short yardage here today as well. It just almost feels a bit, Jake, as though the Huskers are playing this like a playoff game. And I don't know that well, I mean, Langley's had the intensity to match them yeah, so far. Yeah, I think that's a fair comment here. Let's see what they do on second and short. They're going to throw for it. They put it up for grabs again. It's knocked away and incomplete. And... <laughs> I mean, I, here's, you're down 16 nothing. Stay with me here, Justin Morissette. You got two yards to go. You got big Bruce Jones in your backfield. Who's shown an ability to pick up eight yards on a carry on a regular basis. Hand the ball off to the big fella. Let him try and get those two yards. And then I think if you don't get it, do it again. Yeah, and we've talked about you know, the running game maybe not being there for the Rams today, but how many chances have they really had also? You Great know? punt from Birdie as it'll bounce out a bounds with no return inside the 45-yard line. But I just don't know. Just like, I know it's only two scores here, but your offense has not shown an ability to move the football field down the, the field at all. How many more times are you prepared to punt away here against Valley, who has shown the ability to move the ball? And if they put up more points here on this drive, then it's a three-score game, and you're really in trouble. And Bruce Jones, the, the guy that you were just advocating to take the ball on that last <laughs> sequence, only got two carries in yeah. the entirety of the opening half. And Cairo Hassan maybe doubled that. I'd say probably four or five, and just I, going by memory. He didn't get that many touches either. And again, just a two-score football game here. I think fairly early just to abandon the run. Well, you know, this is something they've hung their hat on. And who knows? Like maybe the coaching staff, when they go back and watch this game and break down tape and listen to us two knuckleheads up here in the broadcast, <laughs> we just shake their head going, these guys have no idea what they're talking about. We know what plays we're calling. And they very well might, you know, but uh, I don't know. I just think you, you mentioned it. The guy 
in Bruce Jones has averaged seven and a half yards per carry this season. You got two yards to pick up and two downs to do it. I like my chances with Bruce Jones trying to pick up that first down. That's yeah. all I'm saying. And we've been talking about Reese White coming into this game with a very similar average as far as yardage per carry for the Huskers. The difference in this game, I think, between Bruce Jones and Reese Wyke is that Reese Wyke is being given the ball. Yeah. Yeah. How about those BC Lions last night? Couldn't cover the 10 points, Justin, which uh, looked like they were well on their way to doing an onside kick. Kind of foiled uh, that point spread a little bit, but uh, BC Lions rolling and they got themselves a home playoff game. Big matchup coming up next week against the Blue Bombers of Winnipeg. I got to say, I, I don't know that he had one last night. I was not able to watch the game, unfortunately. But I, I have to say, I really have enjoyed this season getting the push notifications on my phone from that Score Mobile app that Javon Katoy has put up another touchdown for the BC Lions. Always warms the heart. Yeah, he came close. He had about a 40, 45-yard reception that uh, he took down the sideline inside the five-yard line, almost got it in. But uh, Hatcher coming back and and Deion Rimes, uh, that receiving core as a whole with Katoy involved the former Ram. McGinnis, Hatcher, Rimes, Katoy, that... That receiving core, I think, is far and away the best in the CFL. Vernon Adams, the first quarterback to 4,000 yards in, in not only his career, but this season, the first quarterback to do it. BC Lions can make some noise in the playoffs. It's going to be a very fun building come playoff time as they will host at least one playoff I'm game. I'm trying to find some common uh, threads for, for Valley fans and Rams fans <laughs> to, to get behind a like here. Yeah, a little BC flavor on that Lions team as well. Ben Halatic leading the team in tackling, the former high school star. Kyle Clarot, I think, is still in the Lions Lingering system around. as well. Yep. Second and five here for Valley. Late in this third quarter now, 3.40 to go in it. As they'll work from the left hash mark in the shadows now here at McLeod Athletic Park as Fever has not had a lot of pressure come his way all day long. This time he tries to scramble... And he'll be pushed out of bounds at the Rams' sideline for a couple of yard loss there. And probably better just to, you know, you get outside the tackle box if you're fever, just throw that ball out of bounds, save yourself a couple of yards. But he doesn't turn it over, and out comes the punt team here. As the Rams' defense, I think, have done a fairly good job here today with the amount of snaps and time of possession that this Huskers' offense has had. That's a long, taxing time to be playing defense, and I think, you know, only allowing 16 here against a very good Valley team, they've done their job here today. It's the offense for Langley that has just not been able to find their way. Team game, but three three facets of the game of football. Of course, special teams as well, and, you know, not a, not a lot has gone into that. Well, especially when we talk about the yardage that they put up in that opening half, but 284 maybe, yards. Uh, I was about to say, like, maybe that's where they find a spark, a big punt return or, a, you know, a, a, a fumble or an interception or something to, to kind of help the offense get started here. Maybe a big play by the defense or special teams might do that. I was having some flashbacks towards the end of that first half, in fact, Jake, when there were seven seconds left on the clock and – the Rams were going to be receiving a kickoff. Short kick here and uh, just an awful kick. I believe it was Andrew Pokernick back oh. in the day who used to cut loose on the kick return. We've seen some kick return touchdowns oh, here over man. the years. I think Nathan Lund back in the day. Got some great kick returners here in Langley. That ball bounces off the rebound clinic tent down there. It's Beluco still under there. I don't know if his day is done or not, but he's sitting on the trainer table right now as the Langley offense is on the field. And looky, looky, Justin Morissette. Kremler in at quarterback as he'll look to scramble on first down. And he'll be tackled pretty quickly for no gain. And... It's an interesting choice as far as if you did want to make a change at QB, who to put in. 
We did see Jacob Davies warming up along the sideline, but Kremler is a guy who's already been physically engaged yeah. in this game. He's been playing safety on the defense consistently over the course and of the is, afternoon, and he's he made is. a number of big tackles as well. And he is a quarterback by trade. That is his natural playing position. Absolutely. Was playing defense, I believe, with SFU last season, but that might have just been because it's a long wait in line to get in as the starting QB. He'll throw a long one out to the boundary, and he puts it on the money. And tackled forward here, close to a Rams first down. Let's check the spot. What a throw there from Gremler as he put everything he had into that long out. Was able is that Gosen out there? Ryan tried Gosen. to re I think that that's first game. down. Oh, they're going to mark him a half a yard short here. And for Langley, late in the third quarter here near the midfield stripe, there's no kick in this football. you got to find a way to pick up a half a yard here on third down. They put it in the hands of Bruce Jones. I believe it's Cairo Hassan, the lone man back right now. A little tush push here, Justin. We haven't seen that. They're going to hand off. It's Kremler on the rollout. Now he's going to make a move. He's got the first down. Almost got stripped of the football. A helmet comes rolling free. But how about it from Langley and Gideon Kremler on a courageous carry there for first down yardage. That was uh, shades of Buck Pierce. Just the quarterback with no regard for his own well-being, putting the body on the line, leaning into the tackle in a short yardage situation like that. Very impressive stuff from Gideon Kremler. You have to like the that. the tackling again from Valley? Like just one man wrap up and, and down he goes. First and 10, however, here for Langley with one minute to go in the third. And Kremler to throw, looks deep, fires. He's got Comia, catch made as he'll cut across the field and be tripped up inside the 20 as a little change at quarterback in the Rams offense has come to life here late in the third. Not just giving the team a shot in the arm as far as making a change and trying to make something happen, but you have to think a guy like Gideon Kremler. Who, he looks confident, Justin. Yeah, we have been talking about him right from game one coming into this season as a guy that we were hoping to see take some snaps at some point because he was an astonishing star at the high school level. There we go. First and ten. Kremler got the Rams on the move. Now he's going to scramble as he stepped, lost the football, and he'll fall back on top of it. He'll lose a couple of yards, but the drive will continue here as Kremler looked to run and stepped right up in that pocket, but there's the chop to knock the football loose. He has taken some snaps over the course of this season, of course. They've put him in in selective situations here and there, but I don't know that he's necessarily gotten a run like this mm. where they're you know, telling him. It just looked like he's got that gunslinger mentality where no throw is too long or you know, two covered. And if we've been waiting to see him get this opportunity, Jake, yeah. you can only imagine how he is feeling to have been waiting to get it as well. Second and long. He'll throw that one up, and it'll be picked off as he was underthrown and intercepted on the goal line. As a flag comes in late back at the 40, I think that's going to come after the turnover, however. As another turnover here from the Rams, this one coming on the goal line as Kremler would like to have that one back. He just didn't get everything on it, and that was an easier catch for the defender than it was for the receiver. Got to put some air into that ball. He just looked like a guy desperate to seize an opportunity. that he's been waiting a long time for, and sometimes that desperation can lead to unfortunate results, as we saw on that interception. Yeah, a lot of good things happened on that drive, but the play breaks down at the very end, right on the goal line, and I think we'll come here for a third line play to start this drive with a 16 nothing lead and a 15 minutes to play and that kremler to comia connection this play we've seen from langley all day hopefully they can keep that momentum going on another drive in quarter number four and flanks go a flying as this ball is snapped and another positive gain on first down from valley as things getting a little chippy here in the late stages of this game but let's check the laundry once again as 
most likely a hold here on the Huskers, which will back him up. We'll just have to await the call. They're across the line of scrimmage early, so just the five-yard penalty here, but nonetheless, they'll back them up to the five-yard line here. And it's one thing we really haven't seen from either defense today, Justin, is pressure in the backfield. Neither quarterback has been under duress a whole lot here today. They have maybe felt pressure at times. That, But nobody's getting home yeah. on a consistent basis. No, you're absolutely correct. And now back to the goal line in the shotgun here is Fever. Is this the time when you want to pin your ears back and come after the quarterback? They'll knock him down inside the five. And they'll lose a couple of more here on the inside. Handoff to Wyke, which now brings up a second and long, but they'll have to make the long walk all the way down to the south end of McLeod Athletic Park as three quarters are in the books, and they'll flip around here one more time as the south end of the stadium still in the sunshine as the flags fly at half-mast here in Langley. But 45 down and 15 to go. Langley staring at a 16-0 lead. And I honestly, I, I don't know how long I've been doing this, Justin. I want to say at least 10, 12 years, something like that, Langley Rams football games. Cannot remember the last time they have been shut out after three quarters of play on their home field. Now, I don't care who they're playing. I can't. I'm telling you, I don't think it's ever happened. A couple years ago, of course, during that... Canadian Bowl championship season. We saw them shut out a lot of their opponents yeah. over the course well, of that year. Well, they've had some shutouts, no question about it, but to be Held shut scoreless. out on their home field, yeah. you just don't see it. Not with this Langley Rams program. 15 minutes left to try and turn the tide in that regard, and I did like what we saw from Gideon Kremler to get the offense going late in that third quarter. Yeah, I think you got to stick with Kremler after that last drive, regardless of the interception at the end of it. I think you stay with him in the fourth, at least give him another series. And what do you got to lose at this point is they'll try and run it out of their own end zone. They'll get free past the five, but shy of the 10. And this will be a punting situation for Valley and maybe a situation, Justin, where, oh, man. What are we calling here? I think this might go against Valley as the Rams are clapping their hands. Now I was just about to say this might be a situation where if you're Valley, you maybe just take the, the safety here and, and give it up but and, and play a little field position because punting from this area on the football field, you're going to give Langley a... And they're not a great punting team yeah, as it of is. Of course, as we mentioned, they're missing their primary kicker. They've been using these strange formations, rugby-style kicks over the course of this one. Well, and, and that and that way you're still... Like, you give up the two, you're still up 14, yeah. which is two converted touchdowns. So, I don't know. Like, I think that might be... The best laid it, plan here, we, we shall yeah, see. Yeah, it does feel like best case scenario if this punt does get kicked away. The Rams probably start the next drive at about the 45. No, I maybe, think. maybe shorter than that, Justin. I, uh oh. Officials. And, yeah, I. Uh, just getting word here, Justin, and and I don't know if we're or should be going going to air with this, but hearing the coaching staff talking behind us, uh, objectional conduct here on on Valley for maybe a racial slur down the field. Now, I do you want to make clear? T.J. Robertson is a player of color, and I think used a, a word you don't want to use down on the football field regardless of that. I think that's a good learning lesson for, for T.J., and his emotions probably got the better of him if that is, in fact, the case of what happened. But whether you're a black player or a white player, regardless, you don't use it. And they will, in fact, take the safety here, will the Huskers. And that's yeah. a big blow to the Valley offense yeah. as I mean, well. T.J. Robertson... 
has been probably the second most important player to this team of the course of this game, narrowly behind Reese Wyke. Yeah. And whether it's directed to a Rams player, white, black, whatever, there's there's no place in the game for it. And, and on a day like today, especially with truth and reconciliation and everything that's kind of going on with Orange Short Day, I think uh, uh, another learning lesson to be learned by everybody involved down on the football field with that situation in T.J. Robertson. If, in fact, the information that we did here was the case. But uh, T.J. Robertson's afternoon is over as he was escorted off the football field. And the Rams will have the football here on the 35-yard line. And it is Kremler still in there at quarterback as he'll step up in the pocket and just as he was about to get the scramble going, got tripped up. Yeah, it looked like he tripped up over his own man. We'll see if we can take another look at the replay as far as what got his foot snagged, but did look like, unfortunately, tripped over one of his own linemen. So just a yard along the ground there for Kremler. We'll bring up second down and nine here for Langley from their 36-yard line. Got to get out to the 45 for a first down and keep this drive alive. Gramler will take the shotgun snap. Here comes pressure. It's picked up in a low delivery there. And that one's straight into the turf. All right, she'll bring up third down and the punt team back on here for the Rams who just can, I mean, that one just didn't come out cleanly for Kremler. And I don't know if it was going to get there even if it did. Another quick series offensively for Langley on a two and out. Unfortunate, you had hoped that the Rams could maybe keep some positive momentum going after what had been probably their most produ productive drive of the game. Birdie with a good boot to the 38 of Valley. Yeah, pretty good downfield coverage as well to limit the return to about five for Christopher Rolak the third. There was some contact with the kicker on that one as well. That's a tough catch in the sunlight there for Rolak as well. Ball coming out of the shadows, into the sun, and looking up. Good concentration there from the return man for Valley. Way back at the other side of the field, meanwhile, it did look like Raiden Mastin made contact with the kicker, but they might be feeling that the Rams kicker maybe oversold that one a little Fever bit. with a quick throw, completion made, bouncing off a tackle for about seven, and another chance there. And now a late flag comes in on Langley in front of the Husker bench, and that's gonna be another 15. I was just about to say another opportunity for Langley to make a tackle at the point of attack. Player labeled to slip out of that. And then some on downfield in front of the Huskers sideline there. Player drives another player out of bounds and there'll be another 15 yards tacked on. At the end of that play, and you just, you cannot have something like that trailing this game. You're, you're, again, you've got a full quarter to play here. You're down two scores and you just essentially shoot off your big toe with an undisciplined play. I feel like we saw a lot of games like this last year, Jake, but they could they could do that sort of thing because they were still good enough to overcome it. I'm not sure this Rams team is. Yeah. Not defensively anyways, right? You can't just be handy. I mean, look at the chunk that they get after that play. They go from being on the right side of things and on the on the valley side of the football field, all of a sudden they're on the Ram 45. And they're right in business here with a fresh set of downs. And it's Wyke with a big hole. He's got 15, make it 20 yards. As he turns it inside the 30 down to about the 26 yard line. As a big old hole opened up for Reese Wyke. And then he dragged about three Ram tacklers for another four or five yards. I just feel like discipline was more of an issue for this Langley team last season. I think that's a fair comp. Losing their composure the later into a game they got. That really hasn't been the case for this group this season. And Wyke again, same play. 
again missing a tackle out on the edge. Jalal's wake to pick up another three, four yards. Isaiah Cooper couldn't quite wrap up on the first initial attempt. He does well to go low and try and wrap up, but he's so powerful, the legs of Reese Wake. Able to fall forward for a couple more and bring up second and five once again. Seems like they've just stayed ahead of the yardsticks all game long here, have Valley. Just left themselves with second and five, second and six, second and four, over and over again, which really just kind of opens up your entire playbook and allows you to keep the defense off kilter. And we've seen the Rams play this way against other teams over the course of the year, certainly. Second and five. Fever play action all day in the pocket. Slings one out there. Completion made. And again. Yeah, they get him down, but what are they going to say? About a two-yard gain here. It'll be about three yards short. And I think you kick field goal here if you're Valley. You try and make this thing a three-score game. You punch it through. You're, you're up 17. That was... Andrew Locke with the reception. The other running back for this Huskers team, number 28, not number 20, but looked very familiar, very similar to Reese Wyke on that one with his ability to just keep those legs pumping and stay on his feet to try and pick up some extra yardage. The ball on the 26-yarder here, Wyke, and it's through. That's big score there for Valley. Who make it a 17-point game here with 11 minutes to play. And the Rams up against it now here on their home field. 11 minutes to go. Down by 17, yeah. Especially in a game where the Rams have had a hard time getting the offense going. Gideon Kremler coming back in. Kremler will start in the shotgun here. The drive will start from the 35-yard line. He'll spin the pump fake, delivers, goes in completion for about six. And he took a hard hit at the end of that play after he made the catch. Well, that was better timing there from Kremler, who sold it. A bit of a pump fake, but again, it's, you know, Catch made, but tackle made immediately and no yards gained after the catch. Just have to hope that Gideon can get back to that level of confidence he seemed to be displaying in that first drive he had in this game. That's one guy we have not mentioned a lot here as Kremler will dance up the middle. He's got a big hole in this. Oh, runs over a man at the 50 and then takes it inside the 45-yard line, losing his helmet in the process. But what a truck stick there from the Rams quarterback. Incredible run from Kremler, who tripped over his own line on the drive previous, but this time makes no mistake, fakes the handoff. This guy is a football player, Justin. Just no fear. Watch this. Whammo. I was fooled just as bad as the Huskers defense. I thought that ball was handed off to Bruce Jones. Not the case. Jones, the decoy to open that hole for Kremler, and he plowed right through it. And then plowed over a guy in the process. He'll look to throw. He'll scramble out. A flag coming in. A long throw down the field is caught. And another flag comes in. I think we got a holding call in the backfield for Langley. We got a pass interference call in the secondary for Valley. And a long completion made in between all that. And suddenly this game has some excitement again. Gideon Kremler giving this Langley crowd a shot of life to get them re-engaged in the late stages. Nine minutes and 10 seconds to go, but the Rams seem more alive right now than they have at any point in this contest. So what is that, just a redo on the... Wipe out the hold, wipe out the pass interference, and just line it up on a first and 10 again. Let's get the call. First one's holding on Rams. That's a 10-yard penalty. Pass interference. 
Hush goes. That's a 15 yard punt. We go back to the line of scrimmage, five yards, repeat first down. Okay, so they'll get a free five yards out of it. Will the Rams? 10 yard penalty on them, 15 yard penalty on Valley. Redo the down, first down, and it's five to go here as the Rams on the move in this fourth quarter trying to come back from a 17-point deficit. And Kremler's already demonstrated that he's got the arm to go deep. Team on the 40 now. Here he is again, deep drop, set up the screen. The pass plucked off the turf. Jones trying to stay on his feet. And didn't go very far, if at all, maybe a yard for Jones. I don't mind the play call there. I think Kremler is just going to deliver a better football to give Jones a chance to make a move after making the catch. Some debate among the coaching staffs up here in the broadcast booth as we're right in the middle of the two crews as to whether that ball was downed on the reception. But what, what says you? I, I couldn't get a good look at it on the replay. Second down and four. It was awfully close, though. Kremler delivers on the money for Jones. And he's got first down yardage. That'll move the sticks for Langley, but the clock keeps moving as well, and the Rams got to go quick. As we approach eight minutes to go in this fourth quarter, maybe the best drive of the game here for Langley offensively. But still work to be done as they're shy of the 30-yard line here. As they'll spot the ball, clock will wind. Kremler sticks in the mouth guard. He'll take the shotgun snap. A three-step drop, looks deep into the end zone. One-on-one -on -one there with Jones, comes back to the football. Touchdown, Rams. Gideon Kremler connects with Terrell Jones. And Langley gets a touchdown for the first time today. It is not too late to come back in this thing. 7.55 remaining on the clock. And if they can put this one through the uprights or maybe even punch two perhaps, the Rams are still in this thing. Uh, they're going to line up to kick. Make it a 10-point game here with a good extra point as Dosange with those familiar orange shoes lines it up. From the 12, spot good, kick up, and through it goes. And it's 19-9. Eight minutes to go here, Justin. I, do you kick deep, or do you go for an onside job here and try and keep the momentum on your side? I, I just don't know. Eight, you're down two scores here. Eight minutes, a lot of time, but it can, it can disappear pretty quickly on you. I, I think I, if it were me personally, We'll see what the Rams themselves are going to do in a minute here. But I think I would just kick this normally and put some faith in your defense to come up with a quick stop. Yeah. If you can get another yeah. score, whether that's a touchdown or a field goal after that, then, then you go for the onside. Yeah, I still the think stands. if Langley wants a chance to try and come back in this game, they're going to need a big-time play out of either their defense or special teams to give themselves a shot. Like their offense is going to need to do what their offense needs to do, but I think – you know, to come back 10 and under 8 to go, you're going to need a special teams play or, an, you know, a pick 6, something like that. Here's a little squib kick up the middle. And the return back to around the 45-yard line. As everybody dives in at that ball, Langley thinks they have the football here. Langley signaling, yeah. We're getting some arm signals from Evan Nolly. Granted, he's on the opposite side of the field, so I don't know that he has a direct line of sight on that uh, ball. But. It's going to be Valley ball. Well, let's watch the replay here and just see if this thing squirts free at the end of the play. That ball is out, Justin. And it did indeed look oh, man. like number 17, Kieran Palma, was the first person to jump on it. That ball came out at the end of that play and Valley able to get back on top of his wike. Makes a cut, a good one, and another. And he's out near the midfield stripe with another big gain on first down for 20 in green and white. Eight-yard carry there for Wyke, and Reese Wyke has just been the star of this game. And they have really put it plainly. hung their hat on running to the left side of the formation. I really feel like their strength of their offensive line that was actually on the left side. A nine-yard pickup for Wyke, not eight, pardon me. Very impressive. 
Big play here on a second and short for the Huskers. Oh, a little miscommunication. Now a flag comes in. Fever goes down. Noli with the sack. Now a flag down as well. And I think now what do you do here, Justin? This is going to be an interesting call. Do you back him up 10 yards? Or do you have third and short here and force Valley to make a decision on whether they kick or go for it? What do you do? That's a tough one. Penalty they is are declined. declining it. And they did lose a little on that second down play as well, so it's not just a second and one. I think it's going to be a third and three, third and four. And in that case, I think declining it is the right call. If you were looking at third and inches or second and inches, perhaps. And are they keeping the offense out here? Or third and inches rather than... than then I think you would be more inclined to accept that penalty. They are still in the huddle here, are the Huskers, and maybe a timeout is going to come. Yeah. The, the Huskers were out of sorts on that last play to begin with well, as well. The running back went one way. The quarterback went the other. Then they couldn't decide whether they want to punt or, or go for it here on third down. Play clock running down, and they decide to call timeout. But it looks like Fever is going to stay in this game. It's third and what, Justin? About two and a half to go here on the Husker side of the field here around the 53 and a half yard line. And Don't have to quite get to the 55 for a first down. It's a long two. Lucas Fever on that second down tried to hand the ball off to someone who wasn't there. And then you could see him thinking basically in the moment as to what he was going to do, had to improvise and scramble himself. Huge play coming right here. Third down and two to go right near the midfield stripe. Langley trying to get off the field defensively. Huskers trying to put this thing away. They play action. It's knocked down. It's a turnover on down, says Langley. Comes up with the stop. Isaiah Cooper with maybe the biggest defensive play of this game for Langley to this point. Oh, everybody thought it was going to Wyke except Isaiah Cooper who got a paw on it and knocked it to the turf. And maybe you got to question Bob Reist and company. Your all-star running back has been doing damage out of the backfield all game long. You got a third and two, a chance to salt this game away and he try and throw it for the first down. And look, we've been questioning the play calling of the Rams throughout the game as well. Only fair now that we question the coaching staff of the Huskers for their call on that one. I agree with you. I think the run probably the safer option of the well, two, especially. Drive with a football game coming up here as Kremler will take the snap. He'll fire and Gosen tried to turn up field before securing the football as it was maybe a half step in behind him. Even if he had picked that ball up, he was going to be hammered immediately by Christopher Rolak the third. He's been returning kicks here, but now making plays on the defensive side of the football. And you got to think three down territory here for Langley. As they'll work from the right hash mark with three receivers high, two to the near short side of the field. And Hassan in the backfield as Kremler looks to his left, looks to his right, launches downfield. He's got Jones, but it's picked off. Right into double coverage and intercepted. And that will be a costly one there on the Rams offense and quarterback as he just tried to force that thing downfield. Sawyer sons to be able to come up with the interception for the Huskers and a tough break. I, I think that desperation long ball maybe better saved for a later down in the drive perhaps. Uh, I think maybe the slot receiver Gosen will, should have been the intended target there as Jones was double covered. But it looked like a little room in real estate for Gosen, who was up the seam on a post pattern. Uh, it looked like Kremler had his mind made up, threw it into double coverage, and it's picked off again by this Huskers defense. Now they hand off to Wyke. And he'll spin out of a couple of tackles and pick up another close to 10, 11 yards along the ground. He has just been unstoppable. Just watch the initial point of contact there. And what does it get, us? Another 7-8 after the initial contact. And that's tough. 
And how many interceptions is that now for Langley over the course of this game? Got to be at least four, possibly five. Four. Thank you. Is the word from our stat keeper, Patrick. Thank you. But, but that's a pretty high number for this Rams team. I yeah. don't recall the last time we've seen a game, particularly here at McLeod, where they have been picked off that many times on their home field. Just 5.02 to go in this game. Another fresh set of downs here for this Huskers team who has been impressive here today in Langley. And, I, you know, full marks for this 19-9 lead for Valley. Lee you can take anything away from them, especially the John Lucas fever coming in in a, you know, what has been a secondary backup role here this season to come in and have this kind of performance on the road here well, for the youngster. Especially Reese Wyke. We've talked about him glowingly, obviously, for most of this game for the performance he's put on both as a runner and receiver. Yeah. But he's the difference on the scoreboard as a kicker. Here's Fever scrambling. Now he's going to be throwing, and he completes another one for another Huskers first down on a beautiful catch and run there from Luke Rodriguez, who just found a little seam as Fever buys some time with his legs and then finds his man on the run. You see him come across the formation. The original swing pass not there, but then a nice job from Rodriguez to work his way upfield. And then good speed after making the catch goes for 15. First down inside Rams territory now to the 44-yard line. And under four we go here in the fourth. It's a handoff up the middle. And another five-yard gain on first down. Yeah, that is really, you want the, the football game in a, in a capsule, that play right there, that's got to be double digits the amount of times they have run on first down and picked up five yards and quite often in the hands of Reese Wyke as well ball inside the 40 now to the 39 five yards to go here on second down lights yet to come on here at McLeod and they don't need them with just 313 here to go in the game and it's Wyke one more time sheds off a tackle and finds his way right near the sticks again inside the 35-yard line. And they're going to move the sticks here, I believe. I think they're just going to give him the first down on the spot. Andy Ofosuhane signaling that that we should have called, moved the sticks. We have not called his name a whole lot here today. He was signaling with the hands that the sticks were going to move, and the officials eventually agree with him, it looks like. Ball is down to the 34-yard line here, and it is, in fact, the first and 10 for Valley. As we are under three to go, 253. As they'll spot the football, they'll start the clunk. As Fever will stand with his hands on his hips here and let some time tick off here. As no hurry now with a 10-point lead late in the quarter. And inside Ram territory as they'll hand off to Wake again. He's got a big hole up the middle and another Valley first down that is just about going to salt this game away. And that has really been the difference here today. They have not been able to stop the run game of Reese Wyke and Valley. At the same time, credit to the Huskers for sticking with it. Yeah. Because Reese Wyke was getting wrapped up on short yards early in this game. He was getting held to about two-yard gains consistently over the course of that first quarter but they stuck with that run game they had confidence in him and I don't think you can say the same for the running game of the Rams in this one they've shied away from it we talked earlier that they seemed like on the cusp of a big break we did see a huge run obviously earlier in this quarter from Gideon Kremler they get wiped down this time but another four or five yards along the ground before they get him down and you look at the remaining schedules here now Langley coming into this game with a three-game win streak in tow will have that snapped here by the Huskers and go 0-2 against Valley this year. They will not get a chance to play the Sun. When is the last time the Rams have not beaten the Huskers in a season well, as well? you got to go way back, I'm yeah. sure. Point being, they're 0-1 against West Shore. They're going to face them at West Shore next weekend, October the 7th. They go to the island to finish off their season. As play action here for Fever, looking for more points at the end of this game. He's got a completion. He's got a first down. He's got his man down to the three-yard line. And for the Valley Huskers, 
They will play next weekend up in Kamloops. Short trip from the WAC up to the Loops. Still have yet to take in a game at Kamloops. I've got to do that one of these days. And then they will finish off their season in Chilliwack against the Okanagan Sun on the 14th before playoffs begin. We know... And that might be the playoff matchup for those well, two teams. It, in the I was opening just about round. to say. It very likely is. I think it's going to be Okanagan and Valley in the opening round and looking more and more like Langley West Shore for their first round matchup here in 2023. And the Rams played the Rebels very, very well earlier in the month of 20 September. 21 and final on that one. As I said, Jake, that was not a game that you were here for, but no. the Rebels did get a touchdown credited to them late in that game where their quarterback probably was downed with about two and a half yards to the house, and they still gave him the, uh, hmm. the score ultimately. So that is a game that I feel like, and I bet the Rams also feel like, they probably should have ended in a tie. Yeah. That is a team that they... Can't come out on top of against, even though the Rebels, as we said, undefeated at 8-0 on the year. Well, new QB, and I think it's Wyke in there at Pivot. Is he'll just keep it and drive it right to the goal line. No signal. And they're going to say second down. Two more tries, of course. Watch it again from the goal line cam here. Nice shot from the fellas in the truck. Pretty good D. Here from Langley to stack it up. And just 75 seconds left in this one as Valley, who won the opener against Langley 26 18. And looking for almost a similar score line here if they can get across the goal line late in this game. And it'll be Wyke again up under center as they load it up. Diving for the goal line, and touchdown, Valley. And that will surely do it now, Justin. As the Huskers Weiss. are going to win. Four field goals off his boot today, and he will run in a touchdown here as well. A very impressive afternoon for this young man who has unquestionably been the most valuable player in this game. Yeah, for Langley, they'll have to regroup here and get back to the drawing board here a little bit. And there's a disappointing, I don't want to say effort, but a, a, a outing, just a kind of a lackluster performance from start to finish here from the home team. And how about this? Reese Wyke to tack on another point. Three for three in the field goal department. Couple extra points, a touchdown. Over 100 yards rushing. Uh, I, I'm smelling player of the week for Juan Reese Wake. I would say that is a very safe bet. If I could bet on that, I, I would run to put my money down immediately. Very impressive performance. And obviously we saw Gideon Kremler come into this game at quarterback for the Rams. Now what do you do next next week? Get picked be, off a couple times in this fourth do go quarter. Back, do you go back to Jones, give him the first quarter, even first half, and, and see what he can, if he can respond? Or do you maybe go with Kremler to start a game, prepare him, get him the, the, the number one reps during the week? I think Trey Jones has been the guy – Consistently enough this yeah. season that he has earned another look, but you do maybe sort of a shorter feel, leash. Yeah, you do sort of feel for Kremlin because he got put in a situation here where where he had to try and stretch the field. He did. He had to make some desperation plays, and unfortunately, they blew up in his face. But well, one more kickoff to come here, and why not? Reese Wyke will do it and gets a pretty good leg into it as he drives it to the twenty-yard line. As they'll run near side and get across the 25, not much further. As Gosen wrapped up pretty quickly. And man, oh man, what a far cry from some of these Valley teams we have seen over the last decade coming out of Chilliwack and the surrounding area. A much improved football team here for the Valley Huskers in 2023. They've been kind of building and building. But they have arrived here in, in 2023. They, they're a force to be reckoned with. 
just you just don't see a lot of teams come into Langley and dominate the way they have. Ultimately, and I, I, you know, dominate might be a bit of a strong word, Justin, but I like I kind of feel like they have never really been threatened to lose this football game. Yeah, they have uh, kind of pulled the teeth from this Rams offense pretty well right from the jump. As really outside of a couple big plays from Kremler here in the fourth quarter, there hasn't been a lot. You know, there, there really haven't been that many opportunities for the Rams to even put points on the board in this one. Yeah, and who knows, right? Like you're, you're coming off a three-game win streak and some convincing wins over Prince George and Vancouver Island, not the stiffest competition, but maybe a, a bit of a situation where Langley came in feeling a little too good about themselves and, and just didn't really bear down and, and prepare for a real tough football game here today. I don't know. You know, I, I don't know. Obviously not great for the Rams that the Huskers are as strong as they are this season. But as you were saying, it is great to see this program take the steps that they have taken. Yeah, it, it's, it's healthy for the BCFC. I think ultimately, if we can build up this rivalry sure, again, it's want, probably healthy for both teams. You in the want all run. the teams in the BC Kamloops, Prince yeah. George, you want them all. I would love to see Kamloops go on a run at some point. It's just you feel for those fans even that yeah. have had to watch those teams for sure. as long as they've been in the basement. Well, final play of this one, barring a defensive penalty. And Kremlin will just take a knee. And handshakes will commence. That'll do it. As another long seer for Lang, the Rams to drop their record to five and three with just one game to go. It'll come against West Shore next week, October the 7th, over on the island. As the Valley Huskers, how about it? Years and years and years where they did not even win a single game. Now stand with a record and firmly in the playoffs as they move into second place and go to six and two here on the season with a convincing 26-8, yeah. 26-9 victory over Langley here today. And not just to be firmly in the playoff pitcher, Jake, but as you said, second place. They are ahead of the Okanagan Sun. Yeah, that's unbelievable. It really is. It's See a you, Patrick. Thanks great for the sign stance. for the health of the BCFC and the health of this Huskers program going forward. Yeah. Unfortunately, it comes at the expense of the Rams in this one. Well, time for a little gut check, a little reflection, and maybe a bit of a wake-up call here for this Rams team who will have to go back to the drawing board and have a real stiff test next week against West Shore. Yeah, and you kind of feel for the Rams right now, too, with that Okanagan game getting canceled. We, we were talking earlier in the season about it being made up on a bye week ahead of the playoffs. I'm just looking down at the Rams here who have kind of huddled around their goal line and, and I find it very telling that it's it's Gideon Kremler that is standing up in front of his entire team kind of getting into his guys a little bit about their performance here today. I think that tells me a, a, a little something about the leadership of him and kind of taking things on his shoulders a little bit while the coaches were out near center. It was him talking to his team, if you will, and uh, I think that says a lot about Gideon Kremler and his leadership skills. Absolutely. All right. That'll wrap things up here from McLeod Athletic Park on a beautiful Saturday afternoon as it turns into evening. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and don't forget to do a little education on yourself as we'll watch a plane fly into the Langley Airport here on Truth and Reconciliation Day in our country of Canada. And... I don't know, Justin. When are we back? I guess playoff time. We'll have to wait and see when that will be. Yeah. We'll keep you posted. Keep it locked right here on BCFC TV for all your action in British Columbia junior football. And that will wrap it up for us. And if this is our last game? No, we're, we, uh, yeah, I guess we don't know if we're getting a home game or not, but this could be it for, for our season here this year. We don't know. Yeah. Stay tuned. All right, your final score once again, 26-9 Valley over Langley here as they move into second place in the BCFC standings. Langley sits in fourth. For one final time for our production crew here, Robbie Snooks and the gang for Justin Morris set. I've been Jake Kelly, and for the pigskin and the gridiron, have a good Saturday night, everybody.
your local craft brewery. From crisp lagers to sours and IPAs, we've got a fresh craft beer for every happy camper. And we're not just about beer. We serve you at your table in one of our many unique spaces. Enjoy a bite to eat from our camp cookhouse, in the cabin, the chalet, or even amongst the woods. Or soak up some sun on our dog-friendly patio. We're more than just a brewery, we're an experience, right here in the heart of Langley. At Camp Beer Co, we're driven by community, passion, and the thrill of adventure. So come on in, we can't wait to serve you. Oh 